sunny but cool November day in Atlanta, Georgia, where at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, more than 50,000 are on hand to watch their Falcons with a record of 4-4 four and four, entertain the Detroit Lions, who are also 4-4. Four and four. Both teams a game behind in their respective divisions and also very much in the wild card picture. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Costas, along with Tom Matty. And, Tom, based on past performance, we've got to look for a defensive battle today. I don't think there's any question about it. Detroit last week had a shutout. They, they came off a great game last week winning. Uh, their front four has been doing a great job. Woodcock, Orvis, the rest of them right there have done an outstanding job defensively. And then you take a look on the reverse side of the penny and you find the Atlanta Falcons. Their front four has done a great job. The big name is Claude Humphrey. But we have another guy that comes in on passing situations, number 74, Famwina. Big old chief of the Samoyan tribe someplace, and he does a great job. And a look at John James as well, their great punter. He's almost like a 12th man on defense, the way he pins the other team back. Now let's move on down to the field. The Lions have won the toss. They're going to receive the kick. And the man you are looking at is Fred Steinfurt, who was obtained a couple of weeks ago, you recall, as a rookie last year. He kicked for Oakland. He replaced the waved Nick Mickemeyer. And he kicks it off very short, and it goes bouncing out of bounds just inside the 30-yard line. And they may make them do this over again with a five-yard penalty. The man waiting deep, if and when Steinfurt ever gets it there, is Eddie Payton. And Tom, Eddie Payton has brought some excitement to Detroit. He is the brother of the Bears' great Walter Payton. I'll tell you what, this kid is small. They say he's approximately 5'7", but I think he's more like 5'5", five, five, but he can really fly back there. He's done a great, outstanding job on kick returns and has added some excitement to the special teams game, which they need up in Detroit. At a 37-yard punt return, which set them up for a touchdown last week. The Lions blanking San Diego at the Silverdome in Detroit, 20 to nothing. The first NFC victory over an AFC team this year after eight consecutive AFC triumphs. And now Steinford gets that left foot into one, and Peyton moves up to take it at about the 15. Eddie Peyton bouncing off tacklers across the 40-yard line, and another good return by Eddie Peyton. It's great field position, Bob. They get that ball right out there where they can get to work right away. And we'll take a look at the Detroit offense. There's the offensive line, which last week for the first time in two years did not allow Greg Landry to be sacked. John Morris is the veteran of the group. J.D. Hill, Ray Jarvis, and David Hill, the receivers. They often use a two tight end offense with Charlie Sanders coming in. Rick Kane and Horace King are the running backs for Landry. Kane, the rookie from San Jose State, had 105 yards rushing last week. He gets the pass, and he's on his way to another good day as he gets about 9 or 10, scrambling out near midfield. He was stopped by Ray Easterling, the free safety number 32. There's the defensive line of the Falcons, which we alluded to earlier. Merrow is a starter for the first time this year. Robert Pennywell, a second-year man from Grambling, at one linebacker spot. Ortega and Brezina are veterans. Roland Lawrence, a big play man at one corner. Rick Bias at the other. And the safeties are Easterling and Brown. And a look at Greg Landry, who has completed 58% of his passes this year. Again, it's Kane. This time, he finds the going considerably tougher on a second down play. In talking to Detroit, Bob, prior to the game, they feel that they can run against the Atlanta Falcons, which is something that no one has been able to do. There's only been one touchdown scored this past, this year to date, and that was last week. San Francisco finally had a run in from, oh, about two yards out. So uh, their game plan is a running game. Last week, there was only a number, a few passes thrown by Detroit, so they're going in here with the uh, anticipation of really running that ball right down their throats. There's the situation, third down and actually less than a yard. Rick Kane, who has carried the first couple of times, scored two touchdowns and had over 105 yards last week against San Diego, but he did fumble twice, and that's something that has been a problem for him. Again Kane, and it looks like he has the first down. Into Falcon territory go the Lions, and there is a penalty marker down on the play, so perhaps we'll have to wait and see as to whether or not this drive will actually be sustained, but while they're peeling everybody off of each other, we can talk about the Lion ground game, Tom, which really has been the source of much of their offense this year. I'll tell you, the one thing that they're trying to do is keep, them, keep themselves in the ball game, and they feel that if they can establish a good running game, that the other things will automatically open up. Your passing game will become much more effective. And with Landry hitting at 58%. Defense number 75. And with Landry hitting a 58% completion average, it's got to look like they're being effective with it. 
As referee Ben Dry told us, Jeff Merrill of the Falcons was offsides, obviously. The game was nowhere near the five yards they picked up on the penalty, so they took the penalty call. And now from just inside the Atlanta 45, it's J.D. Hill number 86 in motion. And Rick Kane, who is getting a workout, carries for the fourth consecutive time. He is stopped by Mike Lewis, number 69, after a gain of about three. You know, Kane's a kind of a ball player who's coming off. He's a rookie. He's really, he was draft choice, was number three last year. He's only 5'11 and 200 pounds, but they say he's got a heart as big as gold, and he's a real competitor out there. He really wants to play the game, and due to the injury to Dexter Bussey, uh, who's injured in the last couple of weeks, this guy's had the opportunity to get in there and do the job, and he did it last week. Bussey with a sprained ankle, and Kane has responded in his place. Ray Jarvis, number 45, going in motion. The pitch to Kane. They're going to run until he drops. <laughs> and Kane moves down inside the 40 to about the 36. Let's look at it again. Here's the opportunity of watching Kane, how he can read that fullback block. He knocks him to the outside, cuts off the guard's block to the inside, and just digs his feet and gets it in there. Number 50, Greg Brazini makes a tackle. Greg Brazina, the 10-year veteran from Houston. Six different Brazina brothers <laughs> played at Houston. <laughs> That's, That's a, a big recruiting family. program all in itself. <laughs> Third down and one for the Lions, who have mounted this drive exclusively on the ground. And Landry decides to give Kane a rest and sneak, apparently, for the first down. It looks like he's got it, but they may measure. It looks pretty close right here. Clock is stopped with 12 minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first period. And some of the crowds still coming in here in Atlanta. You know, they've been going with the two tight end offense right in there. They've had Charlie Sanders and Hill in there, both at the tight end position, and eliminating one of the flankers outside to get the better blocking because they're going to be concentrating on that running game. It's closer than I thought, oh, but they right. do have it. That's what's known as an eagle eye, able to tell from all the way up here that they had it by half an inch. I have been guessing wrong all year. <laughs> Boy, the stats on this Atlanta defense are remarkable, Tommy. Last week, San Francisco got the first rushing touchdown of the year after eight weeks against the Falcons. They've never given up more than 14 points in any game. They have yielded only five touchdowns in eight games this year and average only seven points allowed per game. On his first carry of the day for good yardage, and that Lion uh, offensive line and those running backs are testing that Falcon defense early. There is a flag on the play. Offsides again, it looks like on Atlanta. And Atlanta again. This is the thing that really killed them last week was the mistakes, the costly mistakes. Mike Lewis jumped offside, but the Lions will decline that penalty. Well, after you pick up nine yards running up the middle, I think I declined the penalty. They only got about one yard to go to get that first down. This is where Atlanta has got to take the opportunity to set that defense up and get it started. They've got to come up with a big play. They've been coming up with it all year long, causing the fumbles and picking off the interceptions. Second down, a short two. Landry, who threw only seven passes all last week as the ground game was the difference in the victory over San Diego. Trying to let Horace King get it, but King ran right into Claude Humphrey, number 87, the nine-year veteran from Tennessee State. One of the great defensive linemen in the NFL. He's, he's not only great, but take a look at the size of this Claude Humphrey right here on the replay. Here's where the back has the opportunity to pick his hole. And boom, he comes right in there. But there's no room to run. Mr. Humphrey is only six foot five, about 270 pounds, and can run faster than I can, but that's not saying too much, Bob. <laughs> they still need one on a third down play. The two tight ends in there to the bottom of your screen. 81 Hill and 88 Sanders to block out this play. And Rick Kane battling for the first down. And again, it will be close. Tell you, you can see where the battle is won, right down there in the trenches. It's good blocking. And a short yardage situation here. Watch Kane as he follows his blockers coming across. The big guard leaning out to the outside. He breaks right off to the inside of him, runs over his own man, and gets that short yard. He puts his head up. You've got to get that first down and keep that drive going. That's two, th three third down situations that they've converted, and that's one of the biggest statistics in football today is third down conversion. Their third first down on this drive. Landry is yet to throw a pass. J.D. Hill is in motion. The pitch goes back to Rick Kane. And by this time, they're waiting for him. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, this Atlanta defense can really move. 
Watch the lateral movement on the instant replay right here as the defensive line of the Atlanta Falcons goes right along. The flow is great. The back is trying to pick a hole, but it's being filled by a, a very mobile defensive line. I would imagine Mr. Landry would like to throw that ball every once in a while. <laughs> they lost one on the play. The Lions have had a terrible road record over the past couple of years. One and six in 1976. And 0 and 4 so far this year. But as you can see, they've had good success against the Falcons. 6 and 0 when Landry has been the quarterback. 9 and 0 overall. The Falcons have never beaten the Lions. Nick Kane runs into his own man and gets nothing. Greg Pozzino is there on the stop. Here, here comes that great defense we've been hearing about again in Atlanta. Watch him come across. Watch Pozzino come across here. Stops the play, slows that back down so he can't get to the outside. He runs into his own man, and there's a follow-up. As you can see, these guys are out there to play football. Brazina's pushing everybody around. Great hustle by Brazina. He slowed the man up, and then he jumped back to his feet to get back in on the play. I'll tell you, that's hustle. Here's a situation right now where they can come up with the draws or the screens that they're going to be looking for the pass, so it would be a good opportunity for Landry to do that. If they screen it, they'll probably be the king. He leads the NFC in receptions. He has caught 33. Firing. He's got his man. Robin Lawrence in on the coverage, and the catch is made by J.D. Hill. There you see him, number 86. A good look at the seven-year veteran from Arizona State. Here's Landry setting up. It's just a straight drop back pass. He stays with the one receiver. He comes right across the middle. I think they marked that ball up a little farther than they should have on that one, but it gives him a first down. They needed 13, and they got more than that. That's a sign of a good receiver. He knows how much he has to get. He runs that pattern where he can run right in there, and he picked up that 13 yards. It was necessary for the first down. It was a 14-yard pickup, to be exact, on the play. It is first and 10 from just outside the 10. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Rick Kane down to about the nine. This telecast is presented by authority of the NFL and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Atlanta Falcons and the NFL is prohibited. I don't think you're going to see too much passing down here unless it's an absolutely essential part of, <laughs> of Landry's plan right now. They have five defensive linemen in. Bombwina has come in now for the Falcons along the front wall. King kind of slipping and sliding and picking his spots. Ralph Ortega, the middle linebacker, made the stop, and he has got some big shoes to fill, <laughs> taking the place of Tommy Novus here in Atlanta. We had the opportunity to talk to Tommy before the game, and, you know, I asked him, I said, you ready to play? He says, you're darn right I'm ready. He said, I just wish my legs would hold up so I could get back out there again. But Tommy was one of the all-time greatest. I think he was, he and Dick Butkus were the two, two toughest guys that I had to play against, the middle linebacker. The ball is on the six. They have to go to the one for the first down. They have converted every third down situation they face so far. There's a whistle as King gets the handoff. And they may have taken too long to get the play off. They may have used up the entire 30 seconds. And if so, it's a costly penalty. A very costly penalty, Bob. You can't make these mistakes. And this is what Detroit cannot do. Hello, again. We have an injured player down in the ball field down there, too. Looks like Mike Lewis, number 69, and he may have lost a contact lens. <laughs> Looks like he's looking for That's something right. rather than being hurt. Yeah. Well, as the search continues, we'll <laughs> tell you that we've got six minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Lions are driving, but as of yet, we have no score. Introducing the Ford in your future, the new Ford Fairmont. A new car designed for today and the years ahead. At 33 miles per gallon highway, 23 city, Fairmont has the highest mileage ratings in its class. Yet it has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars. And base sticker prices for the Fairmont line start at just $35.89. Fairmont, roomy but with mileage like a small car. And the lowest sticker price in its class. Test drive Fairmont. The newest, better idea from Ford. This is an Archer Electronic Smoke Alarm from Radio Shack. It can save your life and property by detecting smoke. Before it's too late. 
and alerting you with a loud, continuous horn sound. It's on sale now at only $21.88. A small price to pay for so much peace of mind. Protect your home or business today with a low-cost Archer electronic smoke alarm. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. From the 11-yard line, third down and 10, following the penalty for Greg Landry and the Lions. They took the opening kickoff, and they have not relinquished the ball since then. This drive has consumed more than eight minutes already. And on third down, they keep it on the ground, and into the end zone goes Rick Payne on an 11-yard burst. A great call by Landry. Here it is again. It's, you know, they're looking for the pass. It's just a quick pitch out to Kane again. The fullback is leading the play. Gets a key block to the outside. The guard's leading around. Kane makes a great cut to the inside. Gets into that end zone for six points. That's a second touchdown only this year scored on the Falcons. Number 73, Russ Bollinger, contributed a very key block on the play. And now Steve Mickemeyer comes into the game. There he is, number 12. His brother, Nick Mickemeyer, was cut a couple of weeks back by the Falcons. Mickemeyer Danielson's hold, and they botch up the snap and fail to convert. Another costly mistake. So there you see it. They get the touchdown, but not the point after. And with 6.35 to play in the first quarter at Atlanta, the Lions lead 6-7. Sears National Automotive Values. From the people who brought you die-hard batteries comes the muzzler, the aluminized muffler from Sears. Muzzler. Only $19.99 installed. Sears announces a price rollback on the steel-belted Guardsman radio. Double steel toughness. And regular prices are reduced $36 to $68 a set at Sears. Well, the weather up here is tough on everything. Oh, you kind of feel good that you have a diehard. <laughs> uh, you need a good battery in the city of Anchorage. In Anchorage, they buy more diehards than any other battery. I think the diehard was probably designed with Anchorage in mind. Yeah, we depend on the diehard. Turns that motor over just fantastic. And so far, Sears diehard battery has been a good battery for me. The diehard, with extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Turn the key over and it goes, you know what I mean? Sold only at Sears. And so Mickemeyer, who failed to convert after the touchdown because Gary Danielson could not hold on to the snap from center, kicks off here. And Mickemeyer generally kicks off rather long. This one gets down to Carl Farmer number 80 at about the five. Farmer brings it out across the 20, and the Falcons will start there. Their first possession of the game, the Lions ate up almost nine minutes in the first possession for them. You know, this is how important Danielson's job is. It was a good snap, and he just let it get through his hands. And these are costly mistakes that you can't get. It's, it's Now it's only two field goals instead of that touchdown. 14 plays to go 59 yards. A ball control drive. They throw only one pass during the entire march. Haskell stand back, and Woody Thompson are the running backs behind Steve Bartkowski. And Haskell stand back. Breaks free over the right side or what looks like first down yardage. And again, and again, here's another flag. But watch Stanback come across. He's following those blockers. Look at number 68 leading out to the outside. Kicks the outside man. Out. Haskell puts his head down and gets almost that first down. Dick Jorn comes up and makes the tackle on it. Defense offside. Decline the penalty. That's first down. As Doug English jumped off sides, we have some other scores coming in. And we'll get to them after we take a look at the offensive line. And you saw it briefly. Thielman and Bryant are both rookies on the right side. Albert Jenkins and Wallace Francis, the wide receivers, Mitchell, the tight end. We've given you the running backs, and of course, the quarterback is Bartkowski. Bartkowski started his first game last week since uh, way back in November 10th of last year was the last time he had a chance to play. So he's really getting back in the groove as far as getting a feeling. Talking to Lehman Bennett before the ball game, they feel that he needs just more time out there playing. There are his receivers again. Jenkins caught five passes last week against San Francisco. Bartkowski in three years has played in only 19 games, so he's really a little more than a rookie. And a great 
collegiate career, of course, to California. This will be his first pass of the afternoon. It is over the head of Billy Ray Pritchett, the running back, number 39. That's one of the things that he hasn't been doing is hitting his backs coming out of the, out of the backfield, and I think that was one of the game plans today. A look at the defensive line of the Lions. Price is in in place of the injured Ken Sanders. There are their linebackers. Ed O'Neill has moved ahead of Jim Laslovic, simply outplaying him in the middle. Levi Johnson hurt, and that has forced some secondary changes. And, and they go with Charlie West, Dick Geron, James Hunter, and the veteran, Lem Barney. What a great career he's had. He sure has. Barkowski on third down. If he was inbounds, this is an interception, and he was. James Hunter has picked it off, his third interception of the year, the second-year man from Grambling. Here again, you can see the pressure that's being put on Bartkowski. The blitz is coming from the outside. It's a good pickup by the back, but just as he gets, delivers that ball, he's leveled, and the interception right on the sideline. Jim Mitchell, the tight end, was the intended receiver, and the Lions get the ball back. Dick. We're identical twins, and we drink identical beers. Light beer from Miller. We love it. The best thing about light beer is it's less filling. Great taste. Less filling. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer. Great taste, Tom. Less filling. And I'm not Tom. You are. Well, I'm Dick. You think you well, are, you but you never were. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. <laughs> Five on the 50 yard line! Hey, Charlie, it was cold last night. You put in the Preston in the freeze? Preston, Preston. Who needs Preston? Preston, Preston? You need Preston. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Preston, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze ups. Preston, Preston. We need Preston. Preston, Preston. You need Preston. The whole weekend. Yeah, we'll go away. Rhoda and Mike plan a weekend, but Ma kicks up a storm. You've got to be there. Rhoda, tonight at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Good old Giants. Bobby Hammond on a one-yard run gives the Giants a 7-low lead over the winless Tampa Bay team. Buffalo has gone in front of Baltimore on a 73-yard punt return by John Kimbrough. That's in the first quarter, 7-zip. Lions after the interception by Hunter. At about the 49-yard line of Atlanta. They lead it 6-0 on an 11-yard touchdown run by Rick Kane. And here's Kane again. He had over 100 yards last week and is on his way to duplicating that performance this time. Now, here's a, great, here's a great camera shot of Kane and the way he does run. Watch his start. Quick start of the count. Picks that hole. Has the opportunity to go wherever he wants to and finds that hole. Buries that head. Knocks a few people down and gets that extra yardage. Another rookie from San Jose State, Wilson Falmwina, will no doubt renew acquaintances with him sometime during the day across that line of scrimmage. Falmwina is in there now, incidentally, for the Falcons. They go with five across the front. Kane again. Spinning for extra yardage. Before Ray Easterling and Robert Pennywell combined to put him down. This kid is a competitor. He is really doing a good job in there. He's a young back. He looks like a veteran. Here's another score that just came in. Cleveland is for real. They're beating Pittsburgh in the first quarter, three to nothing. That Central Division race in the AFC couldn't be much tighter. <laughs> oh, here's, a, here's something that looks good. Seattle over the Jets, 7-0. Jim Zorn to Don Testament, an 18-yard scoring strike. That's in the first period of play. The Lions, who have had remarkable third down success in the first quarter, need a yard on this play. And Landry's gonna cross him up and throw. time in the first place but the Falcons secondary did a good job and finally the protection broke down and Landry had to just float it out there I think you'll see right here where Landry's setting up in here he's looking deep to get the receiver down there and he sees he doesn't have anybody open and he just dumps that ball out there big number 75 Morrow comes in there and really wraps him one number 10 is Wilbur Summers on fourth and one He's averaging just shy of 37 yards per punt this year. And Roland Lawrence, number 22, waits back around his own 10-yard line to return it. Last year, Lawrence returned 54 punts. And NFL, he already has 36 punt returns this year, so he might break his own mark. But he won't run this one back. 
It'll be downed inside the 10. A good boot by Summers. That was what he was trying to do. Keep it in play and get it down somewhere inside that 10-yard line. He had that high kick that has that counsel that could get it down to. So he dropped that ball right down inside the 10-yard line. And Garth Tenaple was the guy who came down to down it. A look at the score. When we come back, the Falcons will have the ball. With the price of most things going up, the sticker price of Pinto, the best-selling American small car, is coming down. As of October 3rd, new 78 model Pintos with more standard features will have a lower sticker price than last year's model comparably equipped. Important features are now standard, like AM radio, power front disc brakes, rear window defroster, tinted glass, and protective body side moldings. Ford Pinto, the best-selling American small car. Now more car for the money than last year. At Ford, the better ideas keep coming. Excuse me, uh, do they serve clams here? No, and they don't serve turkeys either. Uh, pardon, monsieur. It's your clothes. You'd look better in Hagar slacks. Or a Hagar sport coat and slacks. Even a Hagar vested suit. A variety of outfits at prices that are uh, easy to swallow. <laughs> voilà, monsieur. Table for one? Make that a table for two. Hagar, because looking good makes you feel good. So the Falcons start with the ball on their own eight-yard line. We're down to four minutes and two seconds to play in the first quarter in Atlanta. The Falcons are playing their third straight home game, but they have lost two in a row here in their own stadium. Woody Thompson, the third-year man from Miami, at 230 pounds. He is not the quickest running back around, but he can bull ahead for those short yardage gains. You know, you're talking about offensive linemen. They've got two great men, and Warren Bryant, number 66, and R.C. The Thielman. These two guys are young ball players, but they're big and they're aggressive, and they can blow you out. Right here, Woody Thompson is just doing his spinning and diving. They've got the right side of their line set for the next eight or ten years if they stay healthy. Terry Bradshaw to Lynn Swan, 39 yards. The Steelers get the lead back. Second down and seven. Haskell stand back who has averaged more than six yards a carry against the Lions during his career. Stopped on that play by Doug English. We mentioned Bryant and Thielman. And you see that the Falcons have not been the most explosive <laughs> team in the world early in ball games this year. Bryant was the number one pick out of Kentucky. Thielman number two out of Arkansas. And they have built half of an offensive line in one draft for a long time to come, Tom. Yeah, I think they have, too. Jeff Ann Notes, the old veteran in there at center. And they've got two other guys, Brent Adams and Dave Scott, who they think are adequate. But, you know, they're the kind of ball players that you've got to find the big guys and have got to improve to make it a better offensive team. The Falcons' offensive line had allowed only 11 sacks prior to last week. But San Francisco's excellent front four broke through seven times to sack Bartkowski. A lot of that had to do with Bartkowski's limited mobility. Five of those sacks were by Steve McPartman, who really gave Brent Adams a going over. And Adams has to consider whatever happens today to be a breather after his <laughs> confrontation with Steve McPartman last week. I'll tell you, I was what, doing the game last week, and I'll tell you, Hardman was in, that, in the back quicker than the backs were getting out of it. Third down five. Stand back. And he didn't get it. We're going to see John James for the first time this year, and he is the guy who has bailed them out of a lot of situations like this one. Ordinarily, you bring a punter in and this type of situation, and you think the other team's going to get excellent field position. Not necessarily so with John James. That's right. This guy has the capabilities of kicking that long winning kick at 55, 60 yards, get him out of trouble down there, and the ball has a lot of hang time up there, Bob. It gives an offensive players running under the punt the time to get down there really defensive players when it's a punt to get under there and make the coverage Eddie Payton is the deep man at the 40 James has averaged 41 yards per kick and that wasn't a good one well no sooner do we build him up <laughs> and he lets us down apparently we jinxed him coming up on the CBS Sports Spectacular the WBA light heavyweight boxing championship Victor Galindez will defend against Eddie Gregory also, the Turf Classic 
and the world's strongest men competition continues. This past week it was the vehicle full. There they were <laughs> taking some tram down a road. It weighed about eight tons. I couldn't believe these guys. They were getting that. They should put them on the sleds. That, that made our job a lot easier during the practice sessions. We were getting ready for training camp. That's next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern time on CBS as J.D. Hill goes in motion. Good field position again for the Lions and Rick Kane who will have a heck of a day if he doesn't run out of breath before it's all over. And that looks like another flag down there, and I must be against the <laughs> Detroit. Looks like a holding penalty. It is. That's a break for the Atlanta Falcons. They've been having them going against all the penalties have been going against the Falcons so far. We'll see if we can pick it up as we look at it again. Again, they're sticking with their game plan of that running attack. Got to take a look out here. I think maybe... A I can't see the holding, but there's a big pile up in there. Offensive holding, number eight. Well, Ben Dreit's microphone went on us. I can only <laughs> assume that it was either David Hill 81 or J.D. Hill 86. I think it could have been Charlie Sanders in there, number 88, I think that they were saying. One of those 80-somethings. <laughs> can't make a mistake when you say 80-something. Well, at least nobody will be mad at us. We spread the blame around. Kane again. This was a first down and 20 play from the Lion 44. And they had the safety blitz coming up to the inside up in there. The Falcons defense have got it. If you get a chance to hear on the replay, you'll watch a safety man coming right up in between the center and the guard right there, coming across and misses the tackle right there. The guard just knocks him off. But this is something that both these teams do. They like to mix those blitzes up, the safety man coming, the outside linebackers that are coming back to the inside with a... They got all kinds of goodies in their grab bag. Falcons have 28 sacks to their credit this year, and a lot of that can be attributed to their great tendency towards blitzing. Landry. A diving catch, or did he trap it? They say he held on, despite the fact that all the Atlanta players didn't think so. Charlie Sanders, whose specialty is great diving catches, made another one. Here it is right now. Landry setting up. He's got the time and he's got the protection. But there's another flag on the play, too. Flag on the play. I'll tell you, it looked like it. I don't know. That's a close one. The official has to call that. It looks like it bounced to me. I <laughs> but it doesn't count anyway. All for naught. And we'll listen to Ben Dreif as he explains this one for us. Offensive illegal use of the hands on number 71. Frank yeah. Hertwig is the guilty party, third-year man from Georgia. You know, you talk about Charlie Sanders. He's one of the premier tight ends that have ever been in the National Football League. This guy's been the Pro Bowl, I guess, seven or eight times already. He's a leading, you know, Lion receiver in the history of the Lions. He's just a guy that when he gets his hands in the ball, he can do anything with it. Second down and about half a mile for Greg Landry. Ray Jarvis, number 45, to the bottom of your screen. And Rick Kane is tripped up. The fumble came after the whistle. Apparently nothing is going to force Tony Hudspeth and his Lions out of their game plan. Even on second and 28, <laughs> they continue <laughs> they go to grind it out. I'll tell you, we had a little excitement down there right now. Number 75 was getting into it. Somebody over there. You know, I noticed before the game, as... We walked down around the field and through the locker rooms that you seem to be on a first-name basis with many of the officials. You made it a point to cultivate those friendships, didn't you? i tell you one thing, Bob. You know, in a lot of instances when you had it on a first-name basis with the officials, you got an opportunity that there was a close call or something. You know, you said, well, Maddie, stop doing it. Don't do it again. You'd get a warning instead of the flag. David Hill, the tight end on the right. J.D. Hill to the left, but they keep it on the ground. And Rick Kane is stopped by Ray Brown, the strong side safety number 34. He came through to make a fine play and a look Very at some of the more than 50,000 on hand in Atlanta. Perfect you know, football day, sunny and cool. Again, Bob, it's this Atlanta defense that has been keeping That's this ball club in, quarter. you know, right in there. And again, it's another first quarter without any scoring points by the Atlanta Falcons. They trail it 6-0 on Rick Kane's touchdown run. Special moments. Times of your life you'll want to remember in pictures. Smile, Howard. Smile. To help make those pictures look as good as they can, make sure Kodak paper is behind them. If you don't see these words, it isn't Kodak paper. 
Just look for this sign when you get your pictures. Kodak paper for a good look at the times of your life. Gee, wasn't that fun? Who is the number one investment firm in the East? Who is the number one investment firm in the Midwest? Who is the number one investment firm in the South? Who is the number one investment firm in the West? You know who. Merrill Lynch. All around America, more investors turn to Merrill Lynch than any other investment firm. Sure, there are lots of investment firms, but there's only one Merrill Lynch. Panasonic invites you to take a picture of a voice with a Panasonic cassette tape record country. Things was a lot different than it is now. All with built-in mics. Some with built-in radios. There are pocket models. It should last another 50 years. And even some that record in stereo. Say something. Come on, say something. So take a picture of a voice with Panasonic. Say something, bark. Tommy Hudspeth watched this club rebound from a 37-0 shellacking by Dallas to post a 20-0 shutout victory over San Diego last week. Wilbur Summers is into the game to punt again. And Roland Lawrence is waiting back to return. And he will try and bring this one back. Lawrence only to about the 24. He's an exciting player. He return. has had two interceptions, return for Taken. touchdowns, and a fumble recovery, which he took in for a score, and all three have been called back by penalties. If that had not been the case for this low-scoring Falcon club, Lawrence, a defensive pack, would be the top scorer. <laughs> You're right. Introducing a new 1978 Ford Granada, the ESS. Can you tell it from this impressive $20,000 Mercedes 280 SE? Granada. Mercedes. Granada. Mercedes. Granada. Mercedes. The new Ford Granada ESS. See how close you can come to the look of a $20,000 Mercedes at the price of a Granada. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. There's this big argument going on about light beer from Miller. Right. right. Some guys argue the best thing about it that it's less filling. Mm -hmm. That's true. It has a third less calories than their regular beer. Other guys say the best thing about it is great taste. Here, oh. here. I feel very strongly both ways. After all, I'm not the kind of a guy who ever gets into an argument. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. That tummy's got to be a little chilly. The temperature was 48 degrees at game time here. Good old Lydell Mitchell for Baltimore just went on a touchdown run at six yards. That puts Baltimore on front 10 to 7 right now. Markowski and the Falcons. First down play, Woody Thompson runs right into Herb Orvis, number 80. I tell you, they've got to use some type of an imagination here. That offense isn't doing anything. In possession time, the first quarter, Detroit had the ball for 11 minutes and 53 seconds while Atlanta had only had a 307. They could only call on this defense so much. We talked to Lehman Bennett before the game and the Falcon coach was saying that Barkowski was naturally rusty last week. And a 10-3 loss to San Francisco, but another thing he has to work on is that ability to dump the ball off to the back. Here they use the draw play and Stanback gets pretty good yardage before middle linebacker Ed O'Neill brings him down. You know, the linebackers, I think, for Detroit have done a great job for them. You have Ed O'Neill in there in the middle. You have Numoff, and you also have Charlie Weaver. Charlie Weaver has really done a great job. He was the most valuable player last year for the defensive team. And he led the team in tackles uh, with, uh, I think, around 114. So this guy's all over the field. He's got to be moving. Third down, seven. And Barkowski, who has missed with his first two pass attempts, is a likely throwing situation here. And he is still without a completion as Woody Thompson could not make the grab. Ed O'Neill, number 55, tried to cut in front, and if he had come up with that ball, nobody would have touched him on his way to the end zone. He even walked in there. Those are the kind of linebackers love to pick off. But here, again, here's where O'Neill, uh, I mean, Barkowski went to his back that time, but he didn't give him enough time to get that ball, get out open. Answer John James who got off one of his <laughs> rare bad punts the last time he was in the game. 
Every time you say something nice about somebody, they always do the bad thing and don't do a good job for it. Okay, we're not going to say anything this time. We'll just let you look at what he has done so far. And this one also is not very long, but it gets a Falcon bounce. And Eddie Payton decides, well, there are too many red shirts around here, so I'll just let this one go. A little extra contact there. That is known <laughs> as look out. <laughs> I tell you, this is where you've got to be able to be alert all the time. Now watch the big man come in here and just knock it. And he's allowed to do it. The ball is not dead. Dewey McLean came in and really wrapped him one. So the Lions have the ball and for the first time inside their own 30. They have enjoyed good field position so far today. Now Mr. James had a 46-yard punt on that one, though. Got about 10 or 12 on that on the road. Humphrey is way off the mark with that pass. Maybe that's Claude why Humphrey applied the pressure, Tommy. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's been trying to stay with that running game. You know, he has a semi rollout right here. Watch the pressure that's provided by Claude Humphrey as he comes straight across, right through the guard, and really just wraps Landry before he gets a chance to really throw that ball out there. Tom, I'll tell you, with these two teams and their past history of not scoring very high and both having strong defenses. The botched extra point by the Lions might prove to be a very big play in this game. I think so, too. I think that Atlanta has the opportunity to be able to get right back in it. And, you know, that extra point means so much in a game like this. Second down and ten. What a workhorse he's been. And they make him pay for that yard if indeed he got that much. Again, here you get to see the Humphrey being double teamed here. That's how much respect they have for this guy. Two guys are going right after him right in there. Boom. Well, there might have been a little holding in there with that arm in the inside. <laughs> I think Humphrey was a little upset about it anyway. He's a big man. Six foot five, 265, 270 pounds, and he is quick, and he's got the great speed. He can run probably about a 4'8", 40. Pittsburgh is coming back right there. Look at that, 14 to three in the second quarter. Rocky Blyer, the little man, gets in there. The two-yard run for a touchdown. 12-10 to play in the first half. They keep it on the ground on third down and 10. And Robert Pennywell, number 59, there you see him being helped to his feet by Ralph Ortega, was in on the stop against Rick Kane. And obviously, they're way short of the first down, and they'll have to punt. Again, there's good old Claude coming straight across, makes that block. Look how his lateral pursuit comes right down the line. That's that quickness we were talking about. That's what makes a great defensive end. Once again, Roland Lawrence drops back in single safety, standing around his own 35, awaiting the boot by the Good one. Lawrence will try and bring it back. Just about nothing on that return. The Falcons will have it around their own 37-yard line. And Garth Tenapel, who has been doing an excellent job on those special teams, getting down there in the hurry, is credited with the tackle on that play. She can't be too happy just now. <laughs> Except for the insurance and closing. Oh, well, what insurance company? Ah, they're all the same. <laughs> all states different. Different? How? We get a 10% discount for newer homes. Oh? It's a 10% discount. Now 10% off our rate. On basic homeowner's insurance for houses five years old or less. All states different, all right. Good hand. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> when it takes being different to be better, all state will do it. That's a promise from us. A good hands, people. Announcing a unique new motor oil from Exxon Research that can actually save money. New Golden Natural Uniflow. Uniflow was tested in cars like yours. After break-in, it delivered an overall average of 16 extra miles per tank full. Savings like that could cut your gasoline bill the equivalent of about 3 cents a gallon. New Uniflow motor oil is Exxon's best engine protection ever. It conserves gasoline, saves money. Sorry to bust up the game, fellas, but I'm Barbara Rhodes, and I thought you might like my address and my number. Busting Lowe's, Wednesday at 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain. Falcons with the ball from their own 37. First and 10 with 11.39 to play in the second quarter. They trail 6-0. Bartkowski, a quick roll, and oh! the hands of Thompson and into the hands of Hunter. 
His second interception of the day, and he shows he can run with the ball as well. The Lions will have it at the Falcon 31, and that obviously was not Bartowski's fault, but rather Thompson's as it squirted right through his hands, and the opportunistic Hunter picked it up. Here's Bartkowski using that semi-rollout. He sees the back coming straight out, and he throws it behind him just a little bit, and it bounces off his shoulder. Hunter comes up with the interception and makes a great run here. His second interception of the day, his fourth of the year. He led the Lions last year with seven as a rookie. Jeff Van Note got a little bruised up on that one. I think he's got a knee. You know, mistakes like this, Bob, just kill a ball club. Now, you're putting the pressure again right back on top of that defense. He's done a fantastic job just holding this team to six, six points to date already. Then here's another opportunity where Detroit could really get this thing moving. If they can get another score, you know, Atlanta's going to have to play that catch-up football, which, you know, Detroit wants them to do. Barkowski's going to have to throw that ball up in the air. J.D. Hill coming set on the left side. Kane and King, the running back. Morris Kane juggled that ball for the whole time as he stopped by Mike Lewis for no gain, maybe a loss of one. Here's a great end zone shot as they're coming up right up to the line of scrimmage. Watch it back. No hole there. He spins around, almost loses control of that ball. The big man comes in and makes a tackle. I would imagine that the, <laughs> that one hurt a little bit when you get hit in the small of the back like that. We mentioned earlier in the game that the Lion offensive line afforded Landry good protection on those few times when he did pass last week. And there you saw the proof of that. That statistic flashed on your screen. Second down and 11. It's back to Rick Kane. Wilson Falmwina made the stop on him, number 74, stopping his old San Jose State teammate. They're both rookies, Kane and Falmwina. Here you get an opportunity to see Famwina in the back coming across out here. Kane coming along. Famwina, watch number 74 coming along the line in pursuit. This guy's all over the field. The coaching staff is really pleased with the efforts that this man is making. You know, it's interesting. Famwina, his father was a chief of Samoan tribe, which is, uh, we've got some really interesting, <laughs> interesting people that we have on these ball clubs. Famwina says, it's my job to come into the game and freak out the center. <laughs> another great catch by Charlie Sanders. He tried to one-hand it over the shoulder but couldn't quite hang on. All right, here's a chance where you're going to see Fomwina try to get that center, get him freaked out, I guess. He gives him a head slap right there. There may be a little holding going on right here, but you know, the officials can't see it all. Fomwina keeps that pressure on and keeps driving. Fomwina battling the 14-year veteran from Holy Cross, John Morris. This will be a long field goal attempt. A 48-yarder by Steve Mickelmeyer out of Gary Danielson's hole. It's time to snap and the placement are good. But the kick is not. Just outside. Wide to the right. So despite the opportunity presented to them after the interception by Hunter, the Lions fail to score. And with nine minutes and 53 seconds showing on the second quarter clock as you look at a disappointed Micamaya, the lion lead remains 6 0. The closer you shave, boy, the closer you shave, boy, the more you will need, the more you will need. Great balls of comfort, great balls of comfort, to do it with ease. Great balls of comfort, oh, just like Noxima, Noxima, Green Girl. Great balls of comfort to you. The closer you shave, the more you need soothing, medicated Noxzema. Great balls of comfort to you. For the millions of people who need a full-size car, introducing the 1978 Ford LTD. If you need six-passenger space, if you need a roomy trunk, if you want mileage like this, then the full-size 1978 Ford LTD could be just the car for you. LTD, a better idea from Ford.
One of the saddest looking Falcons I have ever seen. <laughs> Looks like Big Bird. Steve Barkowski is 0 for 4 so far with two interceptions. And they give it to Wayne Thompson, and the big lumbering fullback is brought down by two linebackers, Newmoth number 50 and O'Neill number 55. O'Neill made a great play on that. That's a counter play where they, everybody looks like he's going one way and he comes back the other way. And if he couldn't get to the outside, you have to have that blocking up on that line to get it going. Don Shula, your old coach <laughs> at Baltimore, has his Miami Dolphins right in the thick of things in the AFC East. They lead New England in a very important game, 7 to nothing on a one-yard Gary Davis run. That's in the second quarter. Barkowski pitches back to stand back. Haskell stands back. Some very tough yards. The left side of that Lion defense responding again. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Watch the lateral movement of the Detroit Lions right here. The linebackers flowing along. The quick pitch to the outside. Your left of your screen there. The backs are coming up. Number 26 coming up. Number 55. They're making the great plays. Just push them out of bounds. That's tough yardage to get. And it puts them again in another third down and long situation. The Falcons are 0 for 3 so far on third down plays. They need 8. From their own 32. 840 remaining in the second quarter. Looking for his first completion. Jenkins on the reception. Al Jenkins, the little guy from Morris Brown. They list him at 5'10, 172, but Tom, I think he's closer to about 5'9 and 160. <laughs> you can see the pressure that's being put on Bartkowski on the rollout here. This kid's got a great arm. But they also have a flag on the play, so I think it's going to be called back. Oh, that hurts. The Falcons have had trouble all day long getting untracked on offense. They finally come up with a big gainer, and it looks like it might be called back. You know, this little Jenkins kid is a great receiver. Uh, talking to Jimmy Orr, who was a receiver coach here for the Falcons last week, he said this little guy goes about 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, can run at, at a pattern as well as he's seen anybody ever run it. Wait a minute, 5'6"? Offensive personal <laughs> foul tripping. They got him down to 5'10", but he said he ain't nowhere that big. 5'6", maybe uh, <laughs> understating it a little bit. Maybe. Well, let's do some arithmetic. This sets up third down and 18 yards to go from the 22. Markowski with a little flip to stand back. And John James will come trotting out onto the field and punt this one away for Atlanta. That's that 12th defensive man they have in that ball club, Mr. John James. He had a 46-yard punt on the last one. He got a lot of roll on it, about an extra 10 yards on it. But this guy can really do a great job of kicking. And last week, he did a fantastic job keeping him in the ball game. There he is. You know, in a game earlier this year against the Bears, James kicked one out of bounds at the 12-yard line. And there was a penalty against Atlanta and yet Jack Pardee, the Chicago coach, declined it and said, well, we'll take it at the 12. That's better than we might do otherwise if James gets another chance. That's the kind of respect he has around the league. He fields a low side. And booms a high kick out of there. Which Eddie Payton grabs. And he in turn is grabbed and fumbles. Who's got it? I think the Lions do. That was a very dangerous play by Payton. He was surrounded by Falcons and elected to try and return it. He was hit immediately and coughed the ball up. You know, one of the James things on these kind of a plays right here is that Peyton tries to lull you to sleep on it, and if he gets an opportunity, if he can get that ball and slip right up the middle, he can get a long gainer on it. Leon Spinks, the Olympic hero, and the Italian champion, Alfio Righetti, battle this coming Friday, 11.30 p.m. Eastern. It's a CBS Sports Special. And the winner of that might get a crack at Muhammad Ali. Uh, you never know what Muhammad might do. <laughs> You're right there. You never know what he's going to do. I know he doesn't want to fight Kenny Norton if he can possibly help him. Morris King on first down play. Latina was trying to rip the ball out of his arms. Darn near did it, too. That's what's a sign of a great linebacker. One of the guys that I always thought was great at ripping the ball out as far as linebacking goes was, was uh, Dick Butkus and Tommy Novus right here. Again, here's a chance to take a look at what Brazina is trying to do with that ball. It's coming around. Watch, watch him go after it right there. Getting that arm in there and trying to dig it out. This is where a back has got to hold onto the ball because that's what ca causes those big fumbles and the mistakes, and they can't have that kind of mistake down here inside the 30-yard line. 
Seven minutes to play in the first half. Detroit took the opening kickoff and marched 59 yards for a touchdown. Rick Kane going the last 11 for the score. And this is the extra point. And that's the only scoring in the game. 6 nothing in favor of Detroit. Here's, a, here's way the defense of Atlanta really does know how to close that hole up. Watch as he comes back in there. Number 74, Famuina comes in, slows him down. And that's what you call aggressive gang tackling. Look at how many red shirts are around that ball carrier. A Ron Jaworski pass to Tom Sullivan for a 7-0 Philadelphia lead over Washington. And the Redskins must win if they hope to maintain any kind of chance of catching the Cardinals in that wild card race. The Cards are 5-3 in the NFC East. They play the division leader, Dallas, tomorrow night in Dallas. Andrew with a quick pitch. And he's got his man. He's got a first down. J.D. Hill spun out of bounds by Rick Bias, but not before, as you said, Tom, they got first down yardage. I'll tell you, Atlanta had their whole team up on the line right there, and it was a checkoff made by the line of scrimmage by Landry, which was a quick out to the outside. And it connected and got them enough yardage to have that first down. We mentioned that the Lions have had all kinds of trouble on the road the past couple of years, 0-4 this year. And in an effort to break that losing routine, they came in early this week, Tom. You know, it's interesting because a lot of ball clubs felt that they should get there right at the last minute. I really feel that you have to have a time adjustment, number one, and a, and a climate adjustment for a ball player. It's usually about the West Coast on a Thursday to get ready for a game. Well, they came into Atlanta on Friday a day earlier than they ordinarily would have. Trying to turn things around. Rick Kane is turned around by Greg Brazina and Rick Bias, and down he goes. You'll find out, though, Bob, that it's absolutely amazing how superstitious ball players are, and how coaches even get superstitious. I can remember Don Shula when we had a winning streak going. He wore the same T-shirt all season long. He, he washed it though during the week, he, right? Yeah, he sure should. <laughs> Either that, we we're going to send in one of those right guards in there and put him in his locker. But guys are superstitious. But now if this works, you'll find out this ball club will be going in early to all the games. Now. Look at Tommy Eastman on the sidelines and a good look at the veteran from Massachusetts, Greg Landry. Pitches back to Rick Kane. This way, Kane is going to have well over 30 carries for the day. And he's also going to have plenty of bumps and bruises if he keeps running into Claude Humphrey, number 87, who made the stop on that play. An end zone shot of this again is that they're really concentrating on their running game. Kane is coming to the outside. The pursuit is up there. The linebacker, the halfback's coming up. And here's big Claude Humphrey coming in for the finishing touches. You know, this line is very mobile, very active. They can move up and down. And in talking preliminarily to the Detroit Lions pri primarily before the game, their idea was running up the middle, and now they seem to be going to the outside. They've been successful on that first drive going up the middle. I think they'll come back to it. Obvious passing situation for Landry, but both these clubs have been crossing us up and keeping the ball on the ground on long yards previously, but this time Landry throws. And obviously incomplete. Ray Jarvis was the intended receiver, number 45. Rick Bias, 38, in on the coverage. And Wilbur Summers will get another chance to exercise his leg. I tell you, Atlanta's got, get, got to get some type of offense generated here. Out of bounds at about the 32, 33 yard line. A penalty marker is down. Maybe that rule where somebody left a little bit too early. I think they'll decline it. Looks like an illegal procedure call against the Lions. Offsides against the Lions. Let that one pass by. Keep that good field. Illegal motion on the offense. Decline the penalty. It'll be first down. Well, Lehman Bennett, at 39 years of age, the youngest head coach in the NFL, agrees with you, Tommy, and they <laughs> decline the penalty. The challenge of the sexes, celebrity challenge of the sexes, Sunday, November 20th, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on CBS. Check some of these matchups. Classics. Leslie Uggams versus James Franciscus. Valerie Perrine versus James Farantino. And we'll continue to run down the lineups after this play. Stand back. Trying to take it around the right side, but without much success. Herb Orvis, number 80, credited with the tackle. 
you'll see Lola Falana in track and field against LeVar Burton. In swimming, Susan St. James against David Cassidy. I'd like to see that one. In tennis, <laughs> Farrah Fawcett Majors against Dick Van Patten. She's supposed to be a very good tennis player. Would you like to see Linda Blair battle Tab Hunter in horse jumping? We've got it for you. Cross country, Elkie Summer against Robert Conrad. Bowling, Gabe Kaplan against Mackenzie Phillips. On the Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, November 20th. That is a week from today on CBS. Bartkowski throws. In and out of the hands of Jim Mitchell, his tight end. That was good defensive coverage by Atlanta, I mean by the Detroit Lions there. Charlie Mitchell Weaver. Tried Mitchell trying to pull that sneak move coming across the line, and Charlie Weaver, that big linebacker out there, did a great job using, diagnosing that play and seeing what happened. And we have another holding penalty, I believe, against the Atlanta Falcons. You got a good look at Jim Mitchell, the nine-year veteran from Prairie View, who has missed the two previous Falcon games with a knee strain. He is a fine player, an underrated. too soon Al Jenkins and we got another one in the backfield looks like Atlanta is holding again on the line of scrimmage so that's going to be offsetting penalties and it's not going to mean anything we're going to have played it down over oh this is this is a shame 231 remaining in the second quarter holding on the offense pass interference on a defense replay doesn't like that too much <laughs> I don't blame him you know Atlanta Atlanta has only had the ball for seven minutes a little over seven minutes in this in the whole game this whole first half that's not too much playing time Buffalo led that game at one time seven to nothing but Baltimore has come roaring back their latest score a two yard run by Roosevelt Lee and Pittsburgh doing a number on the Cleveland Browns 21 play that could put the Steelers right back into the picture that AFC Central race Throwing deep again, and almost caught, almost intercepted, and it falls incomplete. And Lem Barney and Al Jenkins get themselves tangled up. And here comes that other man, Mr. John James, coming back in again. John James was a cheerleader at the University of Florida, standing along the sidelines. They asked him if he could punt, he said yeah, and he didn't begin punting until he was a junior in college. And he contends that one of the reasons why he's so successful now is that he's been kicking a relatively short time, unlike some who've been kicking since they were seven or eight years old, and thus he still has plenty of leg life. He really thinks the kicking game is a science, too. He knows how to make that ball stop dead. And he paints it. Give him any daylight at all, struggling out to about the 38. And another penalty mark. Looks like a clipping penalty. Yep. It'll be clipping against Detroit. That'll push them back further into their own territory. Well, that's exactly what Atlanta wanted to do to him, but. You know, these are the mistakes. Again, you can't make these kind of mistakes in a kicking game. The special teams are an integral part of a football Russell team today and become more and more important as the season goes on. It was a 36-yard punt by John James. And after the penalty, the ball is back at the 24 of Detroit. They lead 6 to nothing. They scored on the game's first drive, and since then, it's been all defense on both sides. 12 to play in the first half. By now you know that number 32 is Rick Kane. <laughs> I tell you, he's, he's getting his work done today. He's getting paid for the job he's doing. He's willing, I'll tell you that. That's exactly right. He really, he really wants to get in there and do the job, and he's got the capabilities that like last week he had 105 yards. trademark time for your walk where will you take me sure wish you could talk i know what you tell me how your family began with the same levi's blue jeans 
worn by this man. Hey, here comes more Levi's, red, yellow, and blue. Freewheeling kiddos are wearing them, too. And what a surprise. Look who's been window shopping for clothes. Yeah, a gal in her Levi's instinctively knows of your special appeal. Enough of this kissing, little registered Mark. Time that we meet some guys by the park. Dressed in your newest edition. Sums it up right there. Levi's Sportswear. Hey, trademark. This looks like the place where tomorrows begin. Your family's future. Sure looks like it should. That's right, little trademark. Levi's don't have to be blue. Just have to be good. minutes on the nose remaining in the first half. Got some stats a moment ago, Tom, on Rick Kane. He has carried 20 times already for 54 yards. Now, if memory serves me correctly, he went 10 yards on the game's first play, and he also has an 11-yard touchdown run. So aside from those two running plays, the yards have come tough for Rick Kane. Atlanta defense has done a great job at containing him when he has two long ones. That's it. talking about. There he is again. It's number 21. He picked up a couple more yards, but it's a third down situation. Both teams have three timeouts left, so I would imagine that either one of these teams have got to call a timeout, although Detroit would like to go in the locker room sitting on that 6 nothing lead. Don't make any mistakes. I can't believe that Atlanta has not called a timeout here to stop that clock. Third down, three. But again, if they got that first down, it would be the benefit of, of Detroit. See the clock running. He needs three yards, trying to turn the corner out of bounds to stop the clock before Roland Lawrence, number 22, came up from his left cornerback spot. And it looks like he got the first down. Let's see what they do with those chains. Yes, sir. First down. He made a great move to the outside there to get around the corner. Nearly put it on to get, get around to get that first down, got out, stopped the clock. Here's where you can tell a good offensive back right here. Watch what he does. He breaks in the inside, sees there's nothing there, breaks to the outside and puts, a, you know, really puts the speed on right there. Gets around the corner right there and gets that first down, gives him enough to get it. Now, what's Lanner going to do? He's got an opportunity to keep this, you know, stop that clock and try to keep that first down moving and get in field goal position. Greg Brazina is in on the stop as far as King. Gives Rick Kane a bit of a breather by carrying for a change. It's right. I tell you, I guess they're going to be content with that 6-0 lead at halftime. That clock is ticking away. Hello, Tom. Smile. Oh, well, hello there, guys. How you doing? <laughs> they just let that clock continue to run, despite the fact that they have three timeouts remaining. Second down and six. Imagine Tommy Hutchkin figures that he's happy with the 6-0 lead and that the Atlanta defense can perhaps do more to hurt him than the Atlanta offense can, so he'll keep the ball on the ground and not risk an interception. Joe Danello, a 43-yard field goal, add that to a one-yard Bobby Hammond run, and early in the second quarter, the Giants lead Tampa Bay 10 to nothing. Being content to go in there at 6-0, they're going to come out. Atlanta will have the ball at the start of the second half, and I think there's going to have to be some adjustments that are going to be made. They're going to let the clock run out right now. So that is the end of the first half at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium with the Lions leading the Falcons by a score of 6-0. The Lions took the opening kickoff. It was returned out around the 40 or 41 yard line by Eddie Payton. And from that point, they launched a drive which consumed 14 plays, almost eight minutes, ate up 59 yards, included only one pass completion, <laughs> and was ended when Rick Kane bolted 11 yards for the go ahead touchdown. They missed the point after. And since then, it's been all defense, Tom. Six nothing in favor of the Lions. We predicted in the beginning it was going to be a defensive ball game, and so far it has been. Both teams are looking very good. The lateral movements of the, both defensive lines are coming right down the line of scrimmage and cutting off 
any of the, the big gains that are that the backs are looking for to break through. The biggest and longest gain that we've had, I think, has been an 11-yard run by Rick Kane, who's had his work cut out for him today. And, of course, Steve Bartkowski, only in his second start. He's had elbow problems in the past, knee problems, playing with a brace now on his right knee. It weighs three or four pounds. It cuts down his mobility. And he's having trouble getting untracked. Uh, his passing game just hasn't been there this afternoon so far. It sure hasn't. Uh, they talked about, you know, he was stale last week, and he seems to be overthrowing his receivers again today. But the problem is that we've got to come up with some type of a regenerated offense to get something going. In talking to Eddie LeBaron prior to the game, they said that they were going to stick with Bartkowski, mainly because he has the arm that, can, that they can throw the ball. And... Uh, uh, he's got the capabilities. He's got some good receivers. Alfred Jack Jenkins, as far as I'm concerned, is a little guy, but he'll come back for the ball and he'll go up in the crowd and catch it for you. On the other hand, the Lion defense has to be given some credit. They've cut off whatever the Falcons have tried to establish. You're not kidding. And the game plan that the that Detroit have coming into the game and talking to the coaches prior to the game was that they felt that they were capable of running running the ball right at them. And they did that first drive, and they haven't been able to continue it. So there must have been some adjustments made by Detroit. We told you earlier we expected a defensive struggle. So far, we've been correct. At the end of the first half in sunny Atlanta, there you see it. The Lions 6, Atlanta nothing. These kids are playing with Mr. Quarterback, the automatic football passer from Coleco. To start the action, set the timer, choose the pass you want, cock the arm, and get ready. Hut, hut, run your pattern. A perfect pass every time. Great catch, touchdown. With Mr. Quarterback, the automatic football passer, you can run all kinds of pass. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. And that's the guy, Tom Matty, who is going to have to try and get something going if the Falcons are to have a chance in this ballgame. They've got to get some kind of offense rejuvenated to get this thing moving. And it's the responsibility is going to fall on his shoulders, I think. So Steve we're going to see what, he's, we're, we're to see what happens with him. He's a young quarterback. You know, he's only been in there, what, 19? This is his 20th game in three years. He's really got a load of a big responsibility, but, you know, this is what it's made about. Only one of seven with two interceptions in the first half, and the Falcons had only one first down. Look at that. And the number of offensive plays more than double in favor of Detroit. Yards rushing four times as many for the Lions. Right. Yards passing, neither statistic particularly impressive. But, you know, it's really interesting with the total yardage, the yard, four yards net passing. And they have a the time net. of possession. Oh, the possession time was ridiculous. But the net yards that Atlanta had was six yards in the first half. This is what they're really worried about down here. Their defense can hang in, but their offense sure isn't doing anything. Steve Mickemeyer boots with Carl Farmer, number 80, waiting deep. There is Farmer at the five. <laughs> to the 30-yard line, and that's where Atlanta will go to work at the start of the third quarter. Leonard Thompson, number 39, a reserve wide receiver, made the stop on Carl Farmer. Well, they've got that ball in a pretty good field position out there at that 30-yard line. Now, this is where this offense has got to come together, and the Detroit defense has got to, you know, keep hanging in there as they have. They've done a great job, and that's where credit is right now with that Detroit defense. Stand back 24, and Thompson 48 remain as the ball carriers, and Thompson gets the call. And a couple of yards before Charlie Weaver came up to make the stop. Weaver, the Lions' defensive MVP in 1976, had two sacks last week in the victory over San Diego. It looks like they're going to continue with that game plan. Landry has not thrown the ball that much today, and as long as they can keep that ground game going, they'll eat up the clock and keep that score going. Here's where Bartkowski has got to turn in and do a heck of a better job than what he's been doing. Second down, seven from the 33. There's first down yardage out near midfield. They had the blitz on that time, and Atlanta picked the blitz up. You can see that they were jumping around in there. Watch the linebacker coming in. Here comes the safety from the outside. Linebackers are filling the hole. And Thompson breaks the tackle right there, breaks to the outside, picks his hole up, and gets that first down. That's one of the biggest plays they've had today on offense. That was Reggie Pinkney, number 42, coming over to make the stop. That's the second first down that Atlanta has had today, Bob. It's got to get that offense going. Stand back. Into Lion territory. That could be a first, too. 
Jim Mitchell, number 83, and Charlie Weaver, 59, were in on the tackle. They're shuffling the plays in back and forth in here. They used to use that old wiggle waggle system, and it just takes too much time to get it, too much confusion on it. Brent Adams, 61, and Phil McKinley, 73, are alternating at the left tackle spot for Atlanta, bringing that play in from the bench. Before Len Barney shoves him out of bounds. Five second effort by Standback. <laughs> I tell you, there's a busted, here's a busted play, really. Watch Standback go into the line of scrimmage on it. Gets in there, gets hit, bounces around, turn to the outside. Now watch the back block right here. Half Woody Thompson, a great Woody block. Woody Thompson gets a good, big block. He breaks the tackle right there and he goes right down the sideline. And Len Barney, the old veteran, knocks him right out of bounds. Another big gainer, and this is the thing that they got to have. First and ten from the 31, and for the first time, the Atlantic crowd is on its feet. Woody Thompson. Inside the 30 to about the 27th. You know, Woody Thompson's the big back. He's 6'1", weighs 228 pounds. And he's out of Miami. This is his third year, and this is the first time, or last week was the first time where he had the opportunity to really get in there and do a good job, and he ran good last week. But he's got to continue to, you know, continue to improve. He's got his chance. He don't want to let anybody else get back in there. At Chicago, the visiting Kansas City Chiefs have taken a 14-0 lead on the Bears in the first quarter on one-yard runs by their quarterback, Mike Livingston, and by Ed Podolak. That, that offensive line right here, as you can see, watch the back coming in. They're firing out. They're getting the blocking in front. Woody gets a block there, and stand back. Just drives in there. Gets good yardage. It's a good situation. Third down, short yardage to go right here. This has got to have it. They have not converted to down a third yardage situation, third down situation. They have two tight ends in, Jim Mitchell and Greg McCrary. Sash comes up tight. And Stanback is a yard. He's got nine left. Stanback is inside the 15. Stan Here's a ground level coverage of this. Watch Stanback coming across the backfield, picking this hole. The guards are out in front. He's just waiting to see where it's going to break. It breaks to the inside. He cuts back in there. Keeps those legs driving. Gets tripped up right there, but he knows what he's done. He's got that first down, that ever-important first down to keep that ball moving. From the 14-yard line of Detroit, the Falcons trail 6-0, but they're driving on their first possession of the second half. Wojtowski on a broken play goes down. That's the play that the Lions had to come up with. They've got to come up with a big play now to stop this drive. The momentum has changed. It's a broken play. Watch Barkowski right here. It looks like he was supposed to hand off to the other side, and the back went the wrong way. A little mix up with Woody Thompson. <laughs> so now it's second and 13. I tell you, I never wanted to come back to the huddle when I made those kind of mistakes under Unitas. They've got to go to the four to get the first down. 10 15 to play in the third quarter. Stand back. Great effort by the Detroit Lions, making that defense come alive. That momentum has changed, and what Detroit has to do is change it back. we got a little excitement in the ball game again here. Walking along the sidelines for Atlanta, number one, Freddie Steinberg. He'll be warming that left leg up, because if the Falcons cannot convert on this third and 13, they'll bring him in to try a field goal. He's one for one. He's that bad. <laughs> he kicked a 24-yarder for their only points. Last week in a loss to San Francisco. The yards are tough to get when you get down this close. But Barry needs 13. Good protection to the end zone. Broken up. Reggie Pinckney, 42, in on the coverage against Wallace Francis. It's He's great mad because he didn't intercept. That's right. Barkowski setting up right here. He looks to the right. And comes back to the left side. Lays that ball to the outside. And defense back right there. Makes a great play. They were both up for it. Could have had the interception. Now we got to see what Steinforth can do here. He's got to put it in there. It's a left-handed kicker. 
James is used to laying that ball down for a right-handed kicker. Right-footed, right-handed, that's real close. Whatever. Whatever's right. John James, the punter, places it down at the 25. A 35-yard attempt by Steinfort will be off to the side and no good. That was a knuckleball right there. He missed that thing. And the cheers quickly turned to booze Boo at Fulton County Stadium. <laughs> Exit Fred Steinford, and that goose egg remains on the Atlanta side of the scoreboard. The Lions lead it 6 nothing. Are you still chained to? Gotcha. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor lets you walk away, free from nicks and cuts. Its 36 surgical steel rotary razor blades are safely protected inside three floating heads to give you a comfortable shave that's razor close, razor smooth, for up to three weeks on a single charge. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor. It lets you walk away from... Gotcha! Introducing the Ford in your future, the new Ford Fairmont. A new car designed for today and the years ahead. Fairmont's mileage ratings are the same as a little VW Rabbit when both are equipped with automatic transmission. And this Fairmont, as shown, is actually sticker price less than this Rabbit. Yet Fairmont has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars. Fairmont, roomy but with mileage like a small car and the lowest sticker price in its class. Test drive Fairmont, the newest better idea from Ford. Hello. Hello, young lady. How are you doing out there? <laughs> doing better than the Falcons at this point in any event, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you, missing that chip shot had a kill him. Around the 20-yard line after the Mosquito goal by Steinfurt, the Lions are back in business. And the Falcon defense, which must wonder when they're going to get any kind of help from the offense, Stops that play in a hurry. I'll guarantee you that's the first drive that Atlanta's had going for them this whole game right there. And at least they moved the ball down the field with infield goal position and just blew the chip shot. Again, it's a great, you know, Detroit came up with the defense to stop them from getting the six points. Now Atlanta's got to turn around and try to change that momentum again and get that ball back for the offense if they can do anything with it. They got a yard on that play. Second down and nine from the 21. down by Greg Brazina, the veteran right side linebacker. Again, that flow, Bob, was going great. The Atlanta defense flowed right along. King saw he had nothing to the outside, had to cut back to the inside. Here it is right here. You can see the flow of the defense flowing over there. There's nothing out there to that side. Cut back against the grain. And this is where you have an opportunity where you're back to break that arm tackle and get a big gainer out of it. Excellent look at good lateral movement by Brazina there, too. I'll tell you, these guys are mobile and faster. Third down six. Landry wants to put it in the air with time, but incomplete. A penalty marker is down. Ray Jarvis may have been interfered with by Rick Bias. I don't think there's any question about it. He came up over the top of it, tried to knock it down, but he hit him before the ball got there. Gentlemanly gesture by Jarvis, <laughs> helping Bias to his feet. Here he is setting up right now. Landry setting up with a drop back pass. Third down, long yardage situation. Plenty of time. Brazina had the blitz on. The ball is thrown out, and you can see he's hit before he got the ball there. It's a good call by the officials. The flag is thrown. That little yellow thing out there. Nobody likes to see it. You can't have it. It's a big offensive break for the Detroit Lions again. They're keeping that ball moving. First and 10 now for the 36. 7.58 remaining in quarter number three. A drop and throw. Complete to J.D. Hill. And he scampers out of bounds. That's a timing play right there. The receiver and the quarterback work on that in practice all week, Bob. They get that timing down. That's what they call a short out. It's anything where between, you know, five to seven yards. J.D. Hill's old club, Buffalo, has added a field goal. They trail Baltimore now 24 to 10. I'll tell you, there are some pretty ladies in Atlanta. Oh, I think there are anyway. <laughs> you hadn't noticed that until I pointed it out. Where were you looking? <laughs> I've been looking down there with you. <laughs> Running out of an eye this time. The Lions face second and three. King the first man through. He'll be short of the first down. 
Atlanta's doing a lot of jumping around there, faking the blitz, and maybe Landry has the, you know, is checking off on some of these plays. Here's San Francisco New Orleans game. New Orleans jumps out in front in the first quarter, seven to nothing. The 49ers have won three in a row after a bad start. Los Angeles, which leads the Falcons by a game in the Western Division of the NFC in front of Green Bay, seven nothing on a two-yard run by Larry McCutcheon. Green Bay has its problems, but I'll tell you one thing, they've got a great guy up there as a coach. All they need is a little bit more talent. They need two from a tight set. Rick Kane with the first down and more. Into Atlanta territory he goes as the clock continues to move inside seven minutes. Watch Mr. Kane come across here, picks his blocking again. There's a good back blocked by the back in front of him right there. He cuts to the inside, breaks a tackle, gives him the old limp leg on the on the inside and comes up and gets a tackle. Easterly. Later today, Minnesota plays at Cincinnati. The Vikings are five and three. If the Lions win today, they'll be five and four, and the Bengals certainly are capable of knocking the Vikings off. They sure are. That would put uh, the Lions into a first place tie in the NFC Central if that's the way it goes. Well, that's what they're hoping for today, and I can't blame them one bit. All right. Ralph Ortega was right on top of that play. He followed that right down the line of the scrimmage. You can watch Ortega on this. Watch him come straight across. You can see him come in the corner of the pitcher on the right side, coming right down. There he is, right through the middle, right there. Boom. Ralph Ortega's father was a member of Batista's cabinet in Cuba before Fidel Castro came to power, and uh, young Mr. Ortega and his family fled, and he came to the United States at age five. I told you we had some interesting people around here. Between that and our Samoan chief, we got some real ones. Play action fake. Call. We sure do. I don't know whether they purposely try and make Sanders' life difficult or what, but almost every ball he catches or tries to catch seems to be an almost impossible play. You can see Brazina coming here on the rush, and Landry just gets that ball out. Now they call a little interference right there before the. They throw the flag down. That gives him the first down. That's another great offensive play, no matter whether you catch it or not. That was Ray Brown. They said came up with the illegal play. And part of the crowd in Atlanta, and obviously they're not happy about that. Joe Theismann found Frank Grant from 40 yards out to tie the Philadelphia Washington game early in the third quarter at 7 7. Rick Kane, second man through. Kane is inside the 20. I really like the way this little boy picks his, not little by no means, but he's a young back. And he has, he's really picking his holes great. He saw it break it to the outside. The hole opened up. And we do have an injured player on the field right now. It's Ray Easterling. Watch Kane here. He breaks to the outside. There's the hole right there. You can see it open up. It's a great camera shot from the end zone here. You know, everybody always says to me, what is the best seat in the house? And being a football player, I really like to sit in the end zone and watch what happens as the play develops in the defense belt. So, and as they tend to Ray Easterling, Lions maintain that six nothing lead. Where's Daddy? He's outside. What's he doing? He's with some people checking the air in their tires. How come? Because if you don't have the right amount of air in your tires, it isn't safe. But what does Daddy have to do? Because he's a good rich dealer. When he's done with the tires, is he gonna check the air on the bump? Tires you can trust. B.F. Goodrich. The other guys. Touch the first computer TV. Magnavox Touch Tune Color Television. Touch and lock in computer sharp color. Computer fast. Touch. No need to fine tune ever. Touch at the set or by remote control. Computer controlled color. Star System Touch Tune Color Television from Magnavox. Touch one today. Saw the Three Musketeers. Freewheeling fun with fiction's rowdiest heroes. A world television premiere on the CBS Friday Night Movies at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. 
Tom Moriarty, number 45, a young player from Bowling Green, has replaced Ray Easterling at free safety after Easterling was shaken up on the last play. So far, this Detroit drive has uh, covered 62 yards, 37 of it on the pass interference penalty. Kane fumbles, and this drive is finished. Robin Lawrence picked it up, and if Kane hadn't bounced back up off the turf to cut him down, Lawrence might have gone for six. He might have had that first one. Here's a great, here's a shot from the end zone, looking at the ball handling right here. Here's Kane, breaks to the outside, and see the hand in there, knock the ball out. Rowan Lawrence picks it up. If he doesn't get up right here, if Kane doesn't get up, he's off and running. Lawrence would have gone all the way, and you can see that he's disappointed. Here's another angle with him breaking the outside. You can see the hand in there, stripping the ball away. And all right, Lawrence had visions of the end zone, but Kane made a hustling play, and it's still 6-0. There's 85 feet between you and the ground. And there's enough juice at your fingertips to light up the county. But now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, Miller stands clear. Beer after beer. If you got the time, we got the beer. Miller beer. Ever get the feeling that you wanted to cut out? Go home, Mustang. Mustang. Let a Mustang take you away. This is a great time to go Mustang, because this year, Mustang 2 is base sticker price less than last year. Mustang. The 78 Ford Mustang 2 Gia. What are you waiting for? Go Mustang. So cut out. Go Mustang. A better idea from Ford. And this bird really has some moves. <laughs> he, they better have some moves going for him right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That bird is a ham. He wanted to get in on our opening of the game. He wanted to appear on camera and go out coast to coast. <laughs> okay, first and ten after the fumble recovery by Lawrence. Halted for the Detroit drive. Wykowski's going to throw on first down. He might have a crack at catching that one, Tom, but no Falcon did. Now, that was a good decision. He didn't have anybody that was open. He threw that ball away on purpose. That wasn't a bad throw. They keep shuffling those plays back and forth. We've got to get some offense generated by Atlanta to get this thing moving. The last time the Falcons had the ball, they launched their longest drive of the game, and they got deep into Lion territory. And they used the running game primarily to get that thing rolling. Now they've got to come back up. They had some great runs, got those first downs. But they were eventually stopped, and Steinberg missed the 35-yard field goal, so they came away with nothing. Out of the eye, a fake to stand back, and Barkowski throws to stand back. And, he's and got he has a first down. Here again with Barkowski setting up right here. It's a fake play action pass. The back's going out, delayed over the middle. He stopped there, picked it up. And this is just good running by Sandback. He gets that first down. He puts his head down and gets it. You know, Lehman Bennett was telling us before the game that because Barkowski has not gone to the backs in the past, the linebackers weren't even paying any attention to that and playing off very loosely. And there's an example of how to take advantage of that. That whole area was wide open for Sandback. Exactly. And there's Woody Thompson. Again, here's Woody Thompson. They're running to that strong side. They've got the two big men over there, Mr. Warren Bryan and Thielman. They're blowing them out. There's a good bu block by staying back right there. And this kid just keeps his legs driving and keeps it going. When you're 6'1 and about 230 <laughs> pounds, you can break a few tackles. I would say so. This puts them in a, you know, a great position. Second and short yardage. They can come up with a play action play and really go for the bomb here, or they can be conservative and get the first down. Well, if it was your old quarterback, Johnny Unitas, they might have tried that. But this time, they keep it conservative and let Thompson get the first down. You know, that was John's favorite play right there was on a short, second down, short yardage situation. We'd come up with some razzle-dazzle kind of thing. that we'd get, you know, we'd get those linebackers on a one-on-one -on -one coverage with a back coming out of the backfield. And we usually, you know, we'd, we'd capitalize on it. And even if we didn't, we'd come back with a third and one short, short yardage situation and be able to pick up the first down anyway. Speaking of razzle-dazzle, another quarterback who played with you, Earl Morrow, is here. He's doing some work in the press box in communication with Tommy Hudspeth for the Lions. And never forget that flea flicker in Super Bowl III. <laughs> Neither will I. 
Jimmy Orr is still open from here to Tampa. Ooh, almost another interception. Charlie Weaver had a hand on it. Thrown into a crowd there. You know, talking about Earl Morrow, here's a guy who had one of the all-time greatest careers. You know, he still has that crew cut of his, and he's probably one of the nicest guys in football that I've ever Super had the guy. association of playing with. You know, he was bounced around the league. He found a home in Baltimore there, led us to a couple division championships and a Super Bowl. And then he went down to Miami and filled in more than adequately when the when the when Schiller was rebuilding the Miami Dolphins and just retired this past year and is now being used as a consultant. Playoff Miller's five yard run early in the third quarter brings Cleveland a little closer. They trail Pittsburgh 28 10. Second down and 10. And Woody Thompson. Woody Thompson almost broke that when he had a hole there for a minute, but the Detroit Lions closed it up pretty quickly. They're running to that right side. They like Bryant. They like Thielman. These two guys, in talking to the coaches, they feel that Bryant has the capabilities of being the superstar as far as they go. He's a rookie, and the other rookie, Thielman, is a much more consistent ball player. Uh, he doesn't grade out as high, but, you know, he doesn't ever let down. He's just consistent. He fires out. He's got a good pass protection. And now what they've got to do is build up that other side of the offensive line. 2.20 to play in the third quarter, third and seven for Milan, 47. And that is wide open. It's Jenkins. He's wrestled down by Barty, but they have the first down. And Barkowski got laid away on that one after he let go of that ball. Here he is setting up right now. The blitz is on. You can see it coming from the outside. The back does a good job picking up, and here comes number number 80. And watch Jenkins on this isolation. Watch the pattern that he runs on Barty and a veteran. He looks like he's doing the takeoff pattern, does a comeback. And the ball is right there. Barney comes in for the tackle. You know, Lem Barney started the season as a reserve after that great, great career for so many years with the Lions. He obviously wasn't happy. They moved him from the corner to free safety. But then after Walt Williams, a young player, a rookie, had a lot of trouble with Gene Washington in the game against San Francisco, Barney came back to start. He again to the air. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he yes, did. He did. And Barkowski got hit again hard. That time it was Wallace Francis, and he had to do a dance to make that a legal play. I tell you, he kept those two feet in. Here's Barkowski setting up. Watch after he gets rid of the ball right here. He gets hit right in that knee again. The ball is perfectly thrown to the sideline. He gets Here's one where down he's, and two down. He drags that back foot. Look at that. That's a great receiver that could do that. The official is right on top of it. A great job by the officiating crew. The Falcon air game was non-existent until the last two plays. When Bartowski has found first Jenkins and then Francis. First and ten, the ball on the 11th. Woody Thompson to the nine. Clock is moving. We have a minute to play in the third quarter. I'll say one thing, this game is going quick. And once again, you're going to have to think back early in the first quarter and the missed extra point by the Lions the way this game is going that could be the biggest play of the entire afternoon it sure can actually Mickemeyer did not miss the extra point he never got a chance to try it Danielson could not hang on to the snap Jerron was there on the stop, and so was Paul Newmoff, number 50. We'll look at it again. Look at it from ground level here, and the offensive lineman pulling out. Now you can see the flow right here, the back trying to pick his hold. But look at the defensive lineman coming right along the line of scrimmage. The halfback comes up, and Newmoff makes a tackle right there. Third down and six from the seven. They can get a first down at the one, but they'll have to wait. The third down play will come at the start of the fourth quarter. That's the end of three. And her hopes have to have picked up a bit. The Falcons are driving, but right now they trail 6-0. This is an Archer Electronic Smoke Alarm from Radio Shack. It can save your life and property by detecting smoke. Before it's too late. And alerting you with a loud, continuous horn sound. It's on sale now at only $21.88. A small price to pay for so much peace of mind. 
Protect your home or business today with a low-cost Archer electronic smoke alarm. Only at Radio Shack. A Tandy Company. Sultan, look. The rocket reactor. Cut! Cut! Okay, Claire, how did a New York Life t-shirt get into this scene? I just signed up with them to reach my goal of financial security. Security in show business? Through life insurance. They're the winners, darling. For your basic financial security, sign up with the winning team, New York Life. Space Lady, have your agent give me a call. <laughs> we'll return to Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium after this word from your local station. You know, the thing that's really great about this third, third quarter was a possession time. Atlanta had t 10 minutes, which is a total reversal. Bob, 10 minutes and 38 seconds to Detroit's 4 minutes and 22 seconds. Obviously, that was a very brief word from the local <laughs> stations, and uh, we're back. Live and ready to go. They get the first play of the fourth quarter, and they need six yards for a first down, seven for a touchdown, and they'll get nothing. That's a big defensive play that Detroit needed. Jim Mitchell, number 83, the eight-year veteran from Virginia State, came barreling through, and not only do they fail to get the first down or touchdown, but it pushes them back into more difficult field goal position. Barkowski can see the blitz, and he figures he better roll to the outside, but Mitchell is right there, makes the tackle, puts him back in there, and Atlanta's got to come up with the field goal right now. You know, we could have a tie ball game if they kick this field goal. Or would have had one. Speaking of field goals, Carson Long has kicked two for the Buffalo Bills, and now they trail 24 to 13 against Baltimore in the third quarter. And before they even get the snap off, penalty markers fly here. Looks like it's going to go against Detroit. Just a Herb Orbis apparently was the guy who jumped across the line too soon. There's John James. He will spot the ball at about the 22, making it a 32-yard attempt for Steinford, who missed from 35 a short time ago. This one looks like it's right. All right. The Falcons are on the scoreboard. It took them a while, but they got there. 14 minutes and 30 seconds to play in the ball game. The Lions lead 6-3, and now we'll return to Fulton County Stadium after this word from your local station. <laughs> All right! He's as wild as a Brahma bull. Charles Bronson in the television premiere of From Noon Till Three, Wednesday night on CBS. Atlanta went 61 yards in 12 plays before Steinford kicked the 32-yard field goal. Now he kicks off with Eddie Payton waiting deep. Payton plays it and then boots it. Fortunately, Ooh. disaster is averted as he falls on top of it. I'll tell you one thing. That was close enough. I know Detroit was sweating that when that ball bounces around like that. You can't find a handle on it sometime. We've got ourselves a ball game in Atlanta. Bob Costas along with Tom Matty. The Lions lead it six to three. Well, Bob, we got at least a little bit of excitement in, and we got a score coming in here with the Los Angeles game. They lead Green Bay 14 nothing in the second quarter. Pat Hayden to his tight end Terry Nelson, a six-yard scoring strike. And our road scholar is back in there, grumbling away. The Lions have had a six nothing lead since their first drive of the first quarter, and they sat on it until now. It was just cut to 6-3 by the Steinford field goal, so the Lions have to figure they will have to show something on offense before this one is over if they hope to stay on top. Again, you're seeing that great lateral pursuit by the Lions right here. Right now, if, if, if Detroit really wants to keep in it, and here's, here we're seeing it again right now. Watch this lateral pursuit. Watch Humphrey coming straight down the line of scrimmage. The backs are coming up. Boom. Humphrey is in there on the back. And he's coming from all the way on the other side. Morrow makes the tackle. Second down nine. 
13.45 remaining in the game. Out of the eye with King the up man. shaken up earlier, but is back in the game. Came through on that safety blitz and brought him down. Another great shot of the end zone camera right here. Eastley's on a right-hand side of your pitcher. He's in a blitz position. Brazina has to come back out. There he is. He makes a tackle. He didn't look like he's hurt right now. Claude Humphrey jumps on top just to <laughs> let Landry know that he's around. <laughs> Landry had to feel it, too. You know, this. both of these clubs come with that safety blitz, and it's a play that you have to use. Either it's going to be successful or sometimes you get burned on it. Third down 12 from the 13, and if the Lions don't click here, third down 18, my mistake, third and 18. And if they don't come up with this first down, they're going to have to give the ball to the Falcons in good field position. And Kane is not going to get that first down. So now there's a lot of pressure on Wilbur Summers. He's going to have to get away a good punt, or the Falcons will be out around midfield. Again, you've got to give credit to that Atlanta defense. They've done a great job containing the, the Detroit Lions today. And also, you turn around and look at the other part of it. Detroit Lions have done a great job containing the Falcons. So it's been a defensive ball game as we predicted. Wilbur Summers with Roland Lawrence waiting deep. He got plenty of foot into this one. Chases Lawrence. a great wall right there. You can see it developing. Here we go again. You can see it building up. Watch the guys because they come into the picture. Key block right there. Gives him the, gets the turn of the corner. Another great block. There he goes. He's going right down the sideline. This is a great return in great field position. Atlanta's really knocking on the door. Sit tight, Pop. I'll pump myself. Let me tell you something, gang. Any gas will get you where you want to go. But it ought to be in there cleaning your carburetor, too. Now, you want to make sure you're getting the job done, use new STP gas treatment. You just pump in a can with every tank load of gas, and it goes to work. Ford faster. Go, Juice! Go! Rent a Ford from Herc. A superstar in rent a car. Right. Imprisoned by a mad scientist, Logan and Rem have to save Jessica from being brainwashed and losing her mind. On Logan's Run, Monday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain Time. And we've enjoyed the hospitality at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, where the Falcons are generating some excitement now. The punt by Summers carried 45 yards, but Lawrence ran it back 29. The pitch to Thompson. Woody Thompson... Brought down by Dick Jerron. They got around that corner, got some yardage for him. It's about, you know, picked up four yards on the play. Big game in Miami. New England with a record of five and three against the Dolphins, who are six and two in the AFC East. And in the fourth quarter, John Smith has just kicked a 35-yard field goal. That one, like this one, is a defensive battle. It's seven three Dolphins. You know, it's amazing because both of these teams have generated a lot of offense through the year this year. Don't ever count out that Mr. Don Shula. He's one heck of a coach. Second down and six from the 31. Haskell Standback will be dragged down by Ed O'Neill, the middle linebacker. Big defensive play by the four-year veteran from Penn State. Ed O'Neill came shooting through on the blitz again, broke right through between the guard and the center and came up with the big play right there. That puts him back in the hole with a third and long yardy situation. That's when a back really, Bob, when he really feels helpless. He can feel that internal pressure coming through, and he has no place to run. And, you know, stand back is a good overall versatile back, but when you have that pursuit coming right down, bearing down on you, then how much you can do? Third down and 10. The clock is moving with 10.50 remaining in the game. Markowski throwing. First down, Al Jenkins. Inside the 20, the little guy goes. This kid is quick as can be. Barkowski really threw a great ball. I think he's finally getting a little bit of confidence back right now. 
You can see the pressure that's being put on. They have the blitz on again coming to the inside. Linebackers are looking out. Barkowski sets up, really throws the ball. Jenkins has a, a comeback pattern, breaks it. It's a, breaks the tackle right there and gets that first down. Gets knocked out of bounds. Reggie Pinkney finally forced him out. The ball is at the 18-yard line. Woody Thompson, the big guy down to the 15. You know, again, right here, don't count out those Detroit Lions. They've always been noted for being a great defensive ball club. I can remember way, way back when Joe Schmidt was that middle linebacker. He was all over the field. But these guys have done a great job today, and they've got the capabilities of stopping Atlanta right now. And if they do, and if they do, what do we got? Another field goal in a 6-6 time? Overtime is a definite <laughs> possibility in this game. No question about it. There's still plenty of time remaining as Tommy Hudspeth looks on in the fourth quarter. A little more than 10 minutes to play. Second down play. Stand back. Down inside the 10 before Dick Geron, number 26, grabbed him around the ankles and brought him down. And he's hurt on that one. Stanback makes a great run. Here's the handoff right there. It breaks to the outside. Number 68 gets a great block to the outside. Stanback turns it on and almost gets that first down. I think he might have hurt his ankle on the play, though. He wants to stay in. Well, whenever you have a player that comes out, you know, whenever there's a timeout taken, that player has got to come off the field for at least one play before he's allowed to go back into the ball game. the first down. Ah, uh, it's great running by Stanbeck. And by the way, because they stopped the clock for the measurement, that did not cost the Falcons a timeout. That might become important toward the end of the game. Each team still has the full complement of three. Stanback will, however, go out at least for a while, and he's replaced by number 39, Billy Ray Pritchett. Both tight ends, Mitchell and McCrary, are in there now. And there is the situation. They've been knocking on the door throughout the second half. So far, only a field goal to show for it. Billy Ray Pritchett. It takes an army to bring him down. He's a big guy at 235, but the Lions stop him. You got two big backs in there right now, but Stanback is coming back into the ball game right now. They're bringing Jenkins into the outside, so it's you know it's a second down long situation. Got to get in that end zone for the touch. Can't have another first down, so. Detroit has got to come up with a big defensive play and push him back out there again. These guys are fine. This is a this is a great ball game, great defensive ball game. Stand back has come back in, along with Woody Thompson. Mike will try and throw for it. He's got time. He's picked off in the end zone by Reggie Pinkney. A big defensive play for the Lions, and there you saw Woody Thompson slap himself on the helmet as if to say, can't we ever do the anything. finishing touches on a drive? That's right. The blitz is going. Here's Barkowski throwing right into a crowd. And a great defensive play. Number 42. And here we are right now. Six degrees. Saves the day. Introducing the Ford in your future. The new Ford Fairmont Wagon. A new wagon designed for today and the years ahead. The Fairmont wagon has excellent mileage ratings, but while it is trim and lean outside, Fairmont has almost 90% of the passenger space of most large wagons, and with a seat down can swallow up all this cargo. Yet for all this, the new Fairmont wagon, as shown, is actually sticker price less than this little VW Rabbit. Test drive Fairmont, the newest better idea from the wagon master. Come on, gang, big smile. Well, you don't want to leave the good times behind. Pack along a simple shooting Kodak Trimlight Instamatic 18 camera. It's right in your pocket, and it takes big, beautiful pictures just like this. Show them, Sean. Don't leave the good times behind. Save them with a Kodak Trimlight 18 camera. It makes a great gift in an outfit that says, Open me first. To save Christmas in pictures. For a game with a score of only 6-3, to three, there's been a lot of action here today, Tom. <laughs> there sure has. This crowd is enthusiastic enough to get excited about it, too, I'll tell you. First and 10 from the 11. 
Okay. All that Detroit that wants to do right now, Bob, is to get a couple first downs, run that clock down. They've got only a less than uh, less than three minutes right now to go in the ball game. You're reading the time of day, oh, which is 3:09. Oh my okay. goodness! I've got eight and a half to play. Oh, we got a lot of game left. I'm looking at the regular time, 3:09. You got a plan to catch or what? No, no, I've got lots of time. 6-14. <laughs> Pinkney made the key interception in the end zone, but he may have made a mistake in trying to run it yeah, out. Yeah, he did. Puts him in a defensive hole right here. Atlanta's got to dig in. Detroit's got to get a first down. Let's see what happens. Second and seven from the 14. It's back to Cam. Ortega picks it right up on the run and doesn't slow down one stride and gets in there for six points. That's Kane's second fumble of the day. The first one was almost brought back for a touchdown, and this one was by Ortega. Steinfurt's point after. Atlanta leads this football game 10 to 6. And again, that missed extra point is important because now a field goal does the Lions no, no good. good. They need a touchdown to go ahead. Swing and a miss, strike three. Ever want to watch two things that are on at the same time? Well, now you can, because Sony's revolutionary Betamax deck, which hooks up to any TV set, can actually videotape something off one channel while you're watching another channel. With Sony's Betamax, you won't miss a thing. A triple play. You've just seen a triple play. No, I didn't. You don't see those very often. A rain slick highway, a skid, and a potentially major accident becomes a minor incident. Thanks to a crash barrier with a shatterproof plastic nose cone, a unique plastic developed and supplied by Phillips Petroleum. Developing new plastics or making fine products for your car, that's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. So the Falcon defense, which has been the story here in Atlanta all season long, puts them in front. And now Steinford kicks it low to try and keep it away from Peyton. It's picked up by one of the up men. Looked like Woodcock, a defensive lineman, in on the special teams. Yes, it was, number 77. And he got the ball out around the 40, so it's pretty good field position for the Lions, and they have plenty of time, 7.55 to work with. They sure do, and let me tell you one thing. Mr. Landry is a veteran quarterback, and he knows how to move this ball club, and he has a great arm. All he needs to have is the time to afford him to throw that football, and he has that capability. These guys can do the job for him. He's got great receivers. has come into the game now for the first time. He's number 44. And the pass by Landry looked like it was defect deflected at the line of scrimmage right there. Intended receiver J.D. Hill. There's Hubbard, number 44, the eight-year veteran from Colgate. Bothered by shoulder injuries the last two years. Picked up when he was let go by a very deep Oakland <laughs> team. A lot of guys who can't make the Oakland club can find employment elsewhere. That's and that was right. the case with Hubbard in Detroit. Mr. Hubbard is some kind of ball player. He's one of those big, strong backs. You know, he got one one purpose. That's going downhill towards that goal line. You got to feel sorry for Rick Kane. He was a workhorse all afternoon, but he fumbled twice, and now they take him out of there. Landry under pressure. For the sack. Wilson Palmina came in there, the rookie from <laughs> San Jose State. I tell you, you know they're going to come after him. They're going to put that pressure on him. Watch how that pressure is put on right here. They got the linebacker down there. Watch from Wiener, number 74. Given the in and out move, he comes free right there and comes in right in on Landry. Makes a great play. This kid is a hustler. 
Kansas City is on its way to its second consecutive victory under new head coach Tom Bettis. Late in the third quarter, they lead Chicago 17-0, the latest score of 37-yard field goal by Jan Stenerud, despite the fact that the Bears haven't scored. Walter Payton has gone over 1,000 yards for the season in only the ninth week of the year. Hey, Mr. Payton is probably one of the most exciting backs I've ever seen. All right, this is a big third down play. They need 16, and they will lose rather than gain yardage. Second consecutive sack. Dewey McLean, number 52, is in there to bring down Landry, and the Falcon defense inspired now that their club has taken the lead has saved their best antics for late in the game. I'll tell you again, you can see that Lehman Bennett is putting the pressure on, blitzing the linebackers. You can see him coming from the outside right there. Landry does have, has no time at all to set up to throw that ball. So it's not his fault. It's just great defense by the Atlanta Falcons. So now as Wilbur Summers prepares to punt, the assignment for the Falcon offense is to the ball for as long as they can. Roland Lawrence lets it pass. And that falls on it. Somebody may have touched that ball. That might have been temporarily at least a free football. It sure could have been. It must have hit somebody on the back over there. Looked like it hit Billy Rickman, number 82. But Lawrence very alertly pounced on it. And it will be Falcon ball with six minutes and 57 seconds to play in the game. This year, when you step out on the town, don't just drive. Take off in a 1978 Thunderbird with its distinctive look and size, its Thunderbird quality and comfort, and it comes at a down-to-earth price of 5808 with automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, V8, and more. Flight test the 1978 Thunderbird. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. From Maine to California, you sit atop a rig with 13 Ford Speeds and 300 horses. And when the run is over, that's when Miller time begins. Time to stretch out and head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, you've got the time, we've got the beer, Miller Beer. That's how much time stands between the Atlanta Falcons and their fifth victory of the year. It's first and ten at the 41-yard line. A change of footballs before we begin this offensive series. And Tom, even if the Falcons don't hang on to the ball for any length of time, with a punter like John James beginning out at their own 40 with the ball, you know that get it back they're not going to have very good field position that's right he's got the capability of dropping it down in there where they're going to put him back in the hole so that when Landry does come back in he's going to have a you know a long way to go Ed O'Neill stopped Woody Thompson the clock is moving 640 remaining in the game the Lions scored the first time they had the ball a long first quarter march they missed the extra point and that has been it for them today that 6 nothing lead stood up for a long time. Fred Steinfurt kicks a 32-yard field goal in the first minute of the fourth quarter. And then Ralph Ortega ran in a fumble recovery. The six lead. They also have a first down on that pass from Bartkowski to Stanback. That play right there, Bob, is, to me, the most effective play in football. Watch Bartkowski. You see Stanback coming out of the backfield right there. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. He beats that linebacker, hooks up in that dead spot, and the ball was perfectly thrown by Bartkowski. Gives him that field position. Gives him the first down. You know, they have the capability of breaking one of those for long yardage. Bartkowski has to stand back, and the Lion defense is waiting for him, led by Jim Mitchell, number 83. You know, at least Barkowski isn't being that conservative, just trying to ground it out. He's trying to get that first down. He's coming up with this passing situation. He threw it out there, dropped it to his back. I don't think he should go for the long bomb by no means. Let's bite it off in bits and pieces, and he can do the job. Now, it is so important that Detroit comes up with that big play, as Atlanta has done in his fourth quarter, to get the ball back so they can get some offense generated themselves. The clock rolls on, 5.08 to play, second down and 10. Thompson. Jim Mitchell again on the tackle. 
Inside five minutes, this will be a third down play. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. I try to let that clock run down as much as I can before I got, got that ball off again here. Third and a long seven or a short eight. Take your pick. <laughs> and there is the most important part of the scoreboard right now for the Detroit Lions. No question about it. They've got a little over four minutes left to go in this ball game. It's a lot of time that they've got to stop Falcons right now if they want to get possession. Whitekowski's going to put it in the air. He has time. First down. He hit the turf before Paul Newmoff got a chance to get a good crack at him, and that's wise because Barkowski is playing with the injured knee, but he got the first down before he went down. You can see Barkowski they had a tackle tackle game right there. The offensive line picks it up. Barkowski sees no place to go, so he tucks it under his arm, gets right out in front, sees he's going to get hit, as a smart quarterback should do. He makes a dive, gets that first down, and keeps that ball under possession of the Atlanta Falcons. Who did that hurt the Lions? 340 remaining at the 38 of Detroit. Picking up a few yards and more importantly, killing many seconds as the <laughs> clock rolls on. They keep ticking away. They knock off about 30 seconds every time they're in that huddle. And that's I what they've got to do. I imagine the Lions will wait until inside the two minute warning before using up any timeouts. They got to stop that clock sometime. And I think they, you know, we've got three minutes left to go right now on the clock. So we're down at 2.55. They may get another play off here or two plays before that two-minute warning, then they'll start using that two-minute clock. Second and seven. Stand back. Maybe one, if that much. And another big third down play. Big for the Falcon offense, even bigger for the Lion defense. You can see how they're using that clock right up in that right-hand corner. Two minutes and 31, two minutes and 30. It's ticking off. Boy, time is in the favor of the Falcons right now, and Detroit has got to come up with some kind of a great defensive play to stop them right here. They have to get off a play before the two-minute warning because the 30-second clock, which indicates how much time they have to snap the ball, is running a couple of seconds ahead of the game clock with regard to getting down toward two minutes. So that will help Detroit if they can stop this play. is brought down on a big play by John Woodcock. But again, here comes that one guy that we have a whole lot of. Watch the pressure that's being put on Barkowski as he rolls out. Just a great defensive play. Woodcock comes straight through, clean shot on him. Supposed to be a dump out pass that tight end going right down the line of scrimmage. But he makes the play, comes up with that big defensive play, and there's a two-minute warning. Well, at least uh, with regard to saving those timeouts, things have worked out very well for the Lions. The two-minute warning stops the clock here, and they still have the full complement of three timeouts remaining. A sports spectacular coming up this Saturday on CBS. WBA light heavyweight boxing championship. Victor Galindez versus Eddie Gregory. A lot of good boxing these days on CBS. We'll also have the Turf Classic. A mile and a half on turf. The three-year-olds end up. And also the continuation of the world's strongest men competition. <laughs> Those guys are something. I was watching, and I mean, they are big. You should, I'd like to make up a defensive line out of those guys. Well, one of the competitors is an offensive That's lineman, Bob, <laughs> Bob Young, the St. Louis Cardinals. He's a big horse, I'll tell you that. Well, that will be this coming Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time on CBS. We've got another score here right now. Ron Jaworski just ran in one for three yards to put Philadelphia ahead of Washington 14-7 to in the fourth quarter. Still plenty of time left in the fourth quarter of that game, though. 13-44. All right, here's a man who has been very vital all season long to the Falcons' success, John James. And you know he is aiming for that coffin corner. Eddie Payton is standing back at the 10-yard line. Think they'll try and block it? Or set everybody in there. James was knocked down, and that is the big play of the game. Had been running into the kicker. Eddie Payton's return to make any difference unless he fumbled the ball which he did, but apparently the Lions still have it. You knew they had to come with the pass rush, and here they come. James gets the ball away, and here comes a guy late on. 
And a little play acting. He didn't hit him very hard, but that's what the job is. You can't touch that kicker at any time. They got the first down, and Atlanta keeps possession of that ball. Luther Mr. Blue, the rookie wide receiver, number 89, you might have seen him, run into John James. And Mr. James with the little gray stuff on top of his hair right there is smiling very happily right now. That's a bad... That's first down. Well, with the ball likely to go to the 10 or inside of it with James kicking, I guess they figured their best crack at it, especially against a, a team like Atlanta, which is tough to move the ball against, let alone go 90 yards in two minutes against. Their best chance was the block, and they went all out, and they got the short end of the deal. And right right there, the kicker call. Detroit will have to start using their timeouts. Stand back is stopped, and so is the clock. Two more timeouts left for the Lions. You know, they had plenty of time for possession of that ball. They wouldn't have blocked that, you know, wouldn't rough that kicker. They had a lot of time. With Landry in there, I still say that he's probably one of the great guys with that two-minute offense. He can move that ball club down the field, but he has to have the time to be able to throw that football. And that last series, he didn't have the time. Atlanta had come with the big blitzes from the safeties and the, and the linebackers and put that extensive pressure that was put on him where he didn't have the time to throw it. Would you have gone for the block in that situation? I sure would have. I'd have done the same thing as you said, Bob. You know, you, you got a one-shot chance at it. Uh, although James is, you know, has a great punter and he can get that foot off quick enough. But you got to take a shot at it. You put those ten men up and come out after him. Coming up this Friday night, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS, a sports special. We've been telling you about the great boxing on CBS. This Friday, Leon Spinks. The Olympic great against Alfio Righetti, the Italian champion, possibly <laughs> right to meet Muhammad Ali sometime for the heavyweight championship. Who knows? <laughs> you know, we got an update on another score here. Pittsburgh is really putting Cleveland away right now. It's the fourth quarter. Bradshaw, Bradshaw just hit Stallworth for a nine-yard pass completion, and it's 35 to 10 in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're well, back in the ball game. Cleveland lost last week to Cincinnati. Now they are being pummeled by Pittsburgh. They've come back to the pack That's in right. the AFC Central. Time remaining. Upper right-hand corner of the screen. Woody Thompson wrapping both arms around that ball to make sure he doesn't fumble. The Lions will ask for a timeout here. I would suppose. And now they stop the clock. Now, this is something that I have always wondered about, Tom, and you see this all the time. That play ended with a minute 37 on the clock. Why did it take seven seconds more to stop the clock when the Lions know that they have to call a timeout? Why haven't they coordinated things well enough so that the clock is stopped almost instantly? Well, this is where you delegate your captains. So this is their responsibility to get that official, the referee who has the, has the right to stop that clock. He's got to get to him right away and say, timeout. And that's when that clock is stopped and an official calls it right away. But, you know, you, you delegate your responsibility. A team captain out there is responsible for doing that. We have some great games coming up next week right now. Minnesota will play against the Bears at Chicago. Tampa Bay will play these Lions in Detroit. The Lions very tough at home, 4-0. These Falcons will go to the Superdome in New Orleans to play the Saints. Philadelphia, which is in front of Washington right now, will play the Cardinals in St. Louis. I'll tell you, there's a lot of things going to hinge. This race can still hang right in there. Look, Look at this one. Oh, boy. Big interconference game. Dallas against Pittsburgh. And the very hot, you know, San Francisco team that's really coming back. They were 0-5, and they won the last three games. They're winning today. L.A., San Francisco ought to be a great game to see. And if the Falcons hang on here, they'll oh. continue to keep that pressure on the Rams. So that'll be a big one for Los Angeles next week against San Francisco. No question about it. San Francisco feels that they're still in contention. A minute and a half to play, third and 12, one time remaining for the Lions. That play is stopped immediately. The clock is two. 124 remaining. The Lions will have the ball, but no timeouts. That's right. There's, there's the time right there where they stopped that clock right away. No time ticked off. Six seconds. Boom, they got the timeout. Now, here's where they've got to have the rush again. I don't know if they're going to come after it. They've got to do something to put some kind of pressure on James to try to make him kick a short one. They have no timeouts left. You're going to have to look for the sideline patterns. And defensively, the Atlanta Falcons know this. They're going to hang back in there. They're going to come in with their prevent defense. And the Falcons are talking about just that along the sideline. They expect that big rush. The 
as John James trots out there. With a punter like James and a defense like that of the Falcons, if you can get a couple of touchdowns a game from your offense, you're in business. You're right. You know, we, we at the start of the program today, we talked about that 12th defensive player. And James, here's the kid that does it. He, he can really drop that ball back in. Let's see what kind of a punt he gets off right now. it away under very little pressure. Aiton lets it bounce and it goes into the end zone. They had a real good chance they to down that inside the five. They sure did. They wanted to get the most out of it that they could have and it was a bad mistake. We also have a flag down on the field. There's Dewey McLean picking himself back up and I think I believe it is against Detroit. No it might be against Atlanta Tom. Let's see. Okay. Ben Dreith will untangle all the confusion for us. Looks like the Falcons might have sent an ineligible receiver downfield or ineligible man downfield. He left too early, I guess. They're going to kick it over again. They want to try to stop that ball. I'd take the penalty, too. Stop that ball inside the 20, because that would have given them a pretty good field position. They also used up a little bit more of that clock, too. They're down to 114 right now. Seattle Seahawks are very competitive. Illegal man downfield, 45. Didn't mean to interrupt Ben Drive there. No. Seahawks, a very competitive expansion team, lead the Jets 17 to nothing in the fourth quarter in Seattle. That is a big, big upset right there. I thought the Jets were really coming around. Well, Richard Todd was hurt. He yeah. had to go with Marty Domers at quarterback. <laughs> oh, no. He was down with Baltimore, played with me for a couple of years. Good old Marty. John James again. Again, a low step. They came after him and didn't get it. can't get there. So in that exchange, they gained only two yards. They would have had it at the 20 anyway after the touchback, and they lost about 10 seconds. I think James just wanted to get that ball off quick as he could, and he only had a 34-yard punt on that. But now here it is again. It's up to that Detroit Lion offense to generate something. They only have a short period of time left to go in this ball game. And the crowd at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium chants defense. Maybe you can hear them in the background. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, they've risen to the occasion before, and I think they'll do it now. We've got to see what happens. Andrew obviously has to throw on every play. juggled that pass was poor Rick Kane. Oh, boy. When it rains, it pours on a guy, a young ball player like that. But that's, you know, he'll come bouncing back. This kid's got a lot of talent. He's, he's got a great future, I think, in the NFL. If Steinford boots this one through, the Falcons will equal their highest total of the year. And they do with 17. And... 14 of those 17 points set up by the defense. I'll tell you, they did a great job. This defensive ball club has just risen to the occasion, as they said. 17-6. This one is all but over with 55 seconds remaining. A very, very disappointed Detroit Lion team. This defense of theirs has had, held right in there, done a great job for them. And the poor offense just hasn't been able to generate any offense on either ball club. Detroit has nothing to be shamed about, Bob. They've done a great job out here today. And even though they're losing this ball game, that race over there in their division is still tight. And if Minnesota yeah. can get knocked off by Cincinnati, you know, we're right back into it again. Robert Pennywell with the interception return for a touchdown. Earlier, Ralph Ortega ran a fumble in for a score. The defense has done it all. The celebrity challenge of the sexes. We told you about it earlier. It's coming up. A week from tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on November 20th on CBS, such classic confrontations as Nine Phyllis George against Steve Atlanta. Garvey and Ping Pong. <laughs> Christy McNichol of Fleetwood Mac will go skateboarding against Bruce Jenner. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to play some tennis with Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> Wonder who draws that assignment. Hunter 
Alex Nelson stepped out of bounds returning that kick. Which stops the clock, if nothing else, with 46 seconds remaining. Landry's had a tough day today. He's only three for nine. The very thought of Phyllis George <laughs> battling Steve Garvey in ping pong is enough to have you cancel all other plans for the evening, I would say. No question about it. I'll tell you, they've got some beauties on there, and a challenge of the sexes should be very interesting. 46 seconds. to his tight end David Hill stopped by Ray Brown the strong safety and the clock keeps on ticking away there's no timeouts left for Detroit right now so they've got to line up hurry up and get that ball moving the official will stop the clock because the Falcons are obviously taking all the time they can before lining up again Landry throws it out of bounds to stop the clock with 23 seconds the Lions really dominated the first half of this game but in the second half the Falcon offense made some noise. They accounted for only a field goal, but twice they drove deep into Lion territory only to come away empty-handed. And then their defense turned in two big plays for scores, and they're on their way to a 17-6 victory. You know, you think about the six points, you know, that's keeping that, that under that seven-point cut per touchdown per game. That only gives them 62 points in nine games. It's their boy for a big record. Landry throws incomplete as the clock moves down to 17 seconds. When this one is over, the Falcons will be 5 and 4. The Lions will be 4 and 5, 4 and 0 oh at home, 0 oh and 5 on the road. They have had fits away from the Silverdome. They sure have. That's a great field up there, too, and their fans could be. Listen, don't be embarrassed about this game today, I'll tell you one thing. They're still a ball club that's growing. They've got a young team, they're improving with every game. These are the kind of games we told, we predicted in the beginning it was going to be a great defensive battle, and it has turned out to be that. And the two, the two touchdowns that Atlanta has are from you know, defensive plays. And if Cincinnati beats Minnesota, the Lions will still be only a game behind in the Central Division. This pass is complete to little Eddie Payton, and he skips out of bounds to stop the clock with 12 seconds remaining. Atlanta, on the other hand, will trail the Rams by only a game in the NFC West, even if the Rams hang on to beat Green Bay today. Right. And tomorrow night, the Cardinals play the Cowboys in Dallas, and the Bird is keeping some fine company of late. <laughs> and should the Cardinals lose that game to the undefeated Cowboys, maybe five and four, which would pull Atlanta and St. Louis even in the wild card chase. I tell you, it is, it's, it's a close race, and nobody's out of it yet, I'll tell you that. Falcon cheerleaders have every reason to smile. <laughs> 12 seconds to go. Pass was in the general direction of Luther Blue. A lot of pressure on. They had the blitz coming right after him again. Scouts have got to keep moving to stay warm. It's only about 50 degrees here. You can see the pressure coming in. Look at there, seven guys charging right in there. There's no place to go. Luther Blue's coming across the middle to the inside, but the pressure on Landry is too great. Ever since the Dallas girls down there have made such a big ruckus about it, all the other girls around the league have really felt that they, they're just as well qualified to get all the recognition. Tell you something about that after this play. Interception Landry's and the Falcons caught by Lawrence have beaten the Lions 17 to 6 and now John Woodcock is involved in a little extracurricular activity along the sideline as some Lion frustration spills over. I can't blame him there at the end of the game. There's a, there's a lot of frustration going on with the Detroit Lions right now. Here's Landry. He's throwing this up just in frustration. The pressure is great on him right there. He throws up a grab ball. Rollin Lawrence picks that thing off. One thing you better not carry like that, son, it's going to be taken away from you. Tuck it under. Here's where it happens, right on the sideline. There's a little shot right there that's given to him. And a little bit of action is going. But I'll tell you, this is two great ball clubs, two great defensive ball clubs that had a great day going, and we just think that, you know, they're not out of it at all. So the Falcons have proved their record to 5-4, and, and we'll be back after this. Thank you. 